Playing this field at Central Dolphin School District. We're here live for the number 62 in the edition of the Pennsylvania and Maryland Big 33 game. I'm here from Billy Splain from PAFootballNews.com with the great Eric Epler from Penn Live Sports. Eric, it's going to be a great day for a game, huh? Well, the good news is A, it's not Altoona rain. That's right. It's a gorgeous sunny day here at Landis Field, Speed Eversol Stadium. 62nd edition of Big 33. We got a decent crowd. They're still coming in. I think it's going to be a pretty challenging game uh, for the Maryland All Stars, but we said that last year too, I believe. Yes. And we saw a 9 6 game. So I don't think we're going to see a 9 6 game in this one. No, I watched film on the Maryland team. Uh, their quarterback, uh, Lee, is a very good quarterback. He's very athletic and he can wing the ball. He's a tall kid, he's a big kid. And, uh, their wide receivers are fast, and they've got a couple of running backs. I saw one of the money running backs. Uh, we covered a game with McDonald last year, and he was our running back, and he's a very talented running back. On the other side of the ball, Penn State's loaded, or Pennsylvania's loaded this year. Yeah, they are loaded. I mean, they and they've even had some dropouts here in the past week. That kind of, well, it kind of depleted the de defensive backfield a little bit. But we've got guys on the offensive side that can kind of move over and slide in that role. Aaron Young from Coatesville is going to be one of them, uh, the Rutgers recruit. Uh, he's going to be forced to sort of go both ways. Uh, they had a pretty much a, an exodus, if you will. Um, we're not sure if there was injury uh, force or things like that. But we took a pretty big hit. Joey Porter Jr., Penn State yeah. recruit, um, who actually pulled out of an event and state track on Friday. So he could be an injury. Um, you've also got uh, Daquan Hardy. Uh, from Penn Hills, who had that unbelievable performance in the uh, Class 5A championship game in December uh, for Penn Hills. Uh, he is a late scratch. William Penn Charters, uh, Edward Sidi, is also uh, has scratched early this week. And Michael Coleman from Woodland Hills, a defense back. That's four defensive backs. Yes. So you're gonna have some. You're gonna have some sort of athletes. Marquise Mason maybe filling in uh, from St. Joe's Prep. But top to bottom, this is one of the stronger Pennsylvania football teams that we've seen. Um, there wasn't as many uh, guys that sort of got away, if you will. You're right. Uh, you're this right. year, and, and I, it, that's due to the fact that they moved it to Memorial Day. Exactly. There wasn't a lot of kids who had to leave, and that's why they moved it because we were losing kids that had to go to college. Yeah, when they the when, early, when, when basically guys are now reporting June one, it's it's strange. It's, I even had our our, player, our basketball player of the year for Penn Live this year, uh, Luke from um, from Lower Dolphin. He's actually leaving for school today, and he's a basketball recruit. So they're going earlier and earlier. So the, the only real option to move it was to move it up to Memorial Day weekend so you can catch these guys before they go. You mentioned the guys who left. Uh, how about let's talk about Brock Grosser. He, he had a heck of a game in the East-West game, uh, stuck around. They needed to call him up, and that's how it works with the Big 33 in the East-West game. And East -West game. Uh, if you put in a good performance during the East-West game, Somebody drops out, you get pulled up, and Brock Roser is a heck of a pull-up. I thought he should have been picked for this team. Yeah, he, he was very, very close from what the the way they layered it out, the, the initial picks. He was very close to being in that top six of defensive back picks. Um, played in the East-West game, as you mentioned, had 10 tackles, led the team uh, in tackles in that one. West Virginia walk, preferred walk-on, so it's really good to see him in. Now, obviously, being fairly close to Landis Field helped. You know, you, you kind of pull guys in at the last minute. He was available, but uh, I'm glad he gets a chance to play in this game. He's a, he's a well of a player. He really is. Jalen Goodman, wide receiver from Lower Maryland. He's yep. another addition. Uh, we got to see Jalen play. Very good receiver, lanky, uh, fast on the ball. So, I mean, this is a strong team out here. Uh, this is a really strong team, and you mentioned about Goodman adding to the wide receivers. I mean, you got guys like MJ Devonshire, who's an unbelievable form. Will Gibson is here. Uh, Al Equipa guys, um, Nazir Burnett uh, from Bishop McDevitt's heading to Georgia Tech. Uh, he is a burner. Tanias Becker from Bishop McDevitt is kind of the guy you put in the slot. He's so quick, so elusive that you're going to see him probably take some shots over the middle, maybe some deep slants to him. And you got two quarterbacks you can get him the ball. Yeah. Kane Everson from Harrisburg and Kane Prabula from, uh, from Central York. Yeah, I think so too. Uh Maryland won the toss last night. They did the ceremonial toss on the field today. Mm -hmm. Maryland elected to take the ball. And uh, I expect to see this kickoff if, in fact, it is the uh, kicker from Bishop Guilfoyle. If it's Colby, I expect to see a touchback on this. Yeah, Colt McGee's been one of the top-rated kickers in the country for 
probably three years. He came on the scene really as a freshman. I feel like so, I've been covering him for 12 years. And amongst the amongst the rules that are utilized here in the Big 33, uh, return guys will be able to bring it out from the end zone if they choose. That's different from the normal high school season. And of course, the normal rules that we see in the All-Star games do apply. You're gonna have a 60-40 split past the run. You gotta run 60%. And of course, no blitzing, things like that. And you're gonna see man-to-man -man coverage uh, in the secondary all game long, which which is you want you want to see athlete on athlete. That's, that, I mean, that's, that's see, part yeah. of the reason why I you agree. come to see is is your wide receiver against your D backs. All right, all right. Uh, we're gonna take a break. We'll go to commercial. And we'll come back after one minute with the opening kickoff and some more comments from Eric and I. We'll be right back after these words. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, EyeSight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Back in Landis Field, and uh, Eric, um, a kind of mournful week for the Big 33. Uh, we lost a great one this week. Yeah, George Chomp passed away at the age of 83. He just turned 83 in late April. Um, he, I mean, you can, you can work, use a lot of different adjectives for him. A pioneer, uh, his knowledge about football was just unbelievable. Um, but the way he sort of mentored the kids, uh, the college kids, uh, the high school kids, from his early days, and then he backtracked back to high school in his later in his later coaching career. Just the way he sort of handled his players was the most impressive thing to me. As a media guy, I would often call George at 10 o'clock at night. He would he would literally tell me, "Hey, call me late. We'll talk late." Uh, I probably because his schedule was so filled up with talking to people about football, but just so respected in the game of football for what he did. He his accomplishments of building programs up and sort of innovating offenses. Uh, we did a great. Uh, Dave Jones did a great piece on on um, on George last last year about essentially how he saved Woody Hayes' job at Ohio State. And you're talking about a young 20-something coach who really only had six years of high school experience under his belt. Uh, granted, they were 58 and four over those six seasons at John Harris High, uh, which of course is now Harrisburg High, um, and they won six Central Penn League titles yeah. in that time. And he had some stud, you know, some stud recruits who were being recruited by Woody Hayes, being recruited by guys, and, and, and he was essentially recruited to come to Ohio State. When he got there, he brought in a crazy, what was considered a crazy offensive schemes. He opened things up. He got guys in space. And uh, it was no coincidence that his first year there in 68, uh, they won a state, they won a national championship. So yep. he had success in Tampa Bay as an assistant for the Buccaneers. Uh, re helped rebuild the Marshall program after that unbelievable, horrific 1970s plane crash. He was credited with sort of making, getting them to the point where they were the most successful college football program in the 1990s at Marshall. Success at IUP. Success. Well, Navy was his, Navy was his only stumbling block, but it was really an unwinnable situation when he walked into Navy. But he took on that challenge. He wanted that yep. challenge, and then of course he came back, coached Central Dolphin made that program really what they are today um, and back at Harrisburg and CD East. 2012 was his last coaching job at CD East, um, but he's been, he's always been around, you know, yeah, you can yeah, always yeah, find him with football and he's just, just a, just a great human being. And um, uh, you can't, I can't say enough good things about him. And of course he, he coached in this game in 1966. That's right. And in yep. 2004, he was the head coach of the Pennsylvania team. That's right. And uh, I, I believe they, they got a win that year. And uh, 
I had the pleasure of working with him. Of course, we pictured him with George Curry, uh, the great George Curry from Berwick. Right. I had the pleasure of working with George at the Curry Camp. George would come up to the Curry Camp. And, of course, that's what we just held that camp the other day. Yes. And uh, it's now run by uh, Eric Twilliger, or Jim Twilliger from East Stroudsburg. East Stroudsburg, yeah. But uh, George would come up, and he would just hang out on the sidelines, and he would talk to kids. And I remember he would... He would go up into the bleachers and sit down with parents he didn't even know. Yeah. And he would just talk to them. And at that time, the Curry Camp was huge. We had Ron Paulus, uh, went to Notre Dame, and he's still at Notre Dame, and he used to help run it. And we would have 150 junior, sophomores, and freshmen quarterback at that camp while that was strong. And George was just a great guy, and, and he and Curry would get together all the time. You, I mean, you could go to George Curry's house. I would. I lived right down the street from George. Right. And Chomp would be there a good portion of the time. You would stop in because they were very good friends, and they both cared about players. Yeah. I never saw yeah. two men care more about players than Chomp and Curry did. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. He, he cared, and he cared, and he cared for the starting quarterback who was his stud and was going to take him to the victory as opposed to the third string guy that he yeah. cared for every single one on that roster and encouraged kids to come out that maybe would not normally come out for football just to be part of the group to be part to be around it I that's agree. the kind of guy he was so he'll, he'll be sorely missed he was I great agree. great great human we'll being. all miss him um before we get to the kickoff which is coming up here in, a, in about a minute um let's talk about that pennsylvania defense yeah, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to a few things. Number one is Brandon George, the Burks Catholic. Uh, he's playing inside linebacker today, uh, pit recruit. He's he, uh, he's an animal. I mean, there's just no there's no way about it. I mean, he competed in the state track. He's going to be one of your top tacklers in this game. He's just always around the football, and he's almost impossible to sort of – you're not going to shed – you're not going to no. really shed him. You If you don't get your pads on him – He's going to find the football. He's going to make so he, the play. He's one guy to look at. Another guy I'm looking at is Bishop McDevitt defensive tackle, uh, Carter Christopher. Yeah. He played probably as good, and I had an up close. Obviously, he's a District 3 guy and a close program for me. Um, he had probably one of the best second half of the seasons as a DT that I've seen in probably a half dozen years. Um, he's a Princeton recruit. He's smart. But he really gets after it in a, in a position that's really hard to play, especially in this type of game because Maryland's got a lot of girth up front. Um, I'm not sure how well they move as opposed to our, our defensive guys. We got a couple of defensive ends who are pretty impressive in this one. Harrisburg's Deontay Nichols being one of them. But I'm looking forward to seeing how Carter Christopher works um, in that in that trench. You know what I mean? Because if he if he's having a good day, this is going to be a long day. There's, there's some guys in the trenches on both sides of this ball. Maryland has a very big line. We've got Colton McGee ready to kick the ball. And the kick is up. And it's a short kick for McGee. It's uh, going to come down. One of the up men takes the ball at the 15-yard line. And he makes it out to about this 24-yard line. And that's where Maryland's going to start at the 24-yard line. And we'll wait to see who comes out at quarterback for Maryland. Um, it could be an interesting uh, game for the for the Pennsylvania defense because they're the, the Maryland quarterbacks are big guys and they can sling the ball. It will be but Collins look Lee. for them to run the ball. Uh, traditionally, Maryland has been a running team in this game. Now, of course, they have to throw the ball a certain percentage of the team, but you know they may come out and try to establish a run. But we're back in the shotgun. It will be Collins Lee under center there. And we got movement already on the line, and that's what happens. We talked about this in the East-West game earlier. Uh, yeah. It takes a few minutes, uh, you know, to get the to get ready for the count. And, uh, of course, we've got movement on the line, and that's going to go against Maryland. So we're going to have a first down and 15 yards for Maryland. And they're going to be on the 19-yard line. So Schley's going to bring him out. He's got two men left, two men right. The back off to his left. There's the snap. He's back to pass, and he throws a short pass, on, and it's complete at about the 23-yard line. And catching that ball looked like number one, Brevin Easton. Gain of three yards on that play. Uh, there again, the, the Pennsylvania DBs, the, the, they were right on the coverage. He didn't get much. They didn't give him anything at all. Uh, one of the things that stands out to me right now is the size of that left tackle for Maryland. He is a <laughs> large, large man. That's Adam Will from Loyola. 
And we're back to pass again. He's looking, looking. He's got a hole. He's running. And yeah. he gets about, I'm going to say, five yards up to the, looks like the 27-yard line. Yeah, Schley did a lot of that during the season last year uh, at Oakdale. They, Oakdale, of course, won the 2A title in Maryland. He was player of the year for them, Kent State recruit. Um, he's pretty elusive, 6'4", you know, you figure, oh, pocket passer, he's a guy to go. But he's, uh, he's pretty elusive for, for, a, for a big quarterback. All right, so we got a third down, seven yards on the 27-yard line for Maryland. Mm, we'll probably see a pass here. And it's going to be easy. He's got three, three men to his right. One to his left, the back's in the back. The back slips out to the left. He's looking long. He's in trouble. He tosses oh. it up and misses an open receiver at the first down. That was Deontay Nichols on the outside, the right side. Got the pressure, outside swim. Forced Lee to kind of duck underneath and throw that pass a little bit heavy. That ball was intended for McDonough's Jabriel Johnson, and uh, he's a good athlete. Again, we saw some of these athletes. We covered a couple of games where McDonough came up, and they've got a few a few guys on this team. But uh, he was an impressive athlete, and they played against First Catholic. Yeah, absolutely, this is a pretty impressive uh, set of return guys here too. Devin Shire and Aaron Young. Yeah, uh, two of Pennsylvania's best return guys, and they're not going to get a chance to touch the ball. <laughs> oh, but a mistake. Oh. No. Yeah. Devonshire can't do that kind of stuff, but uh, well, yeah, that's a blunder on uh, MJ Devonshire. Yeah, you gotta. We'll give the we'll give the double medal, double gold medal uh, winner in this year's uh, track events uh, a buy on that one. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one you just scream, get away, and get away. But again, those big play guys, they think they can turn everything into a touch. Seventy-five yeah. zigzag carnival ride touchdown. I'm sure they'll let him know. We got Cade Cade Prabola in the backfield to start the game. Cade's a great, great, great quarterback from down at York. Puts a man in motion. He's got two is to his left, one to his right. Is it back? And they're gonna fake the handoff. He rolls out. He's oh. in trouble, yep. and he goes down. That's a big loss back to the 20 yard line, and it's Mr. Perry. He had a, a uniform change. Joe Perry from Westminster, he's, he's heading to Shepherd University. Uh, Joe Perry is a big man. He's 6'3", he's two, 250. He corrected me on that. He's 250, not 240. <laughs> but uh, he went flying in and, and just took him down. Yeah, that play takedown. Jeremy Wynn was on uh, Hayden Rucci on the, coming out uh, for the line of scrimmage, and that's who Prabula was looking for. All right, and uh, there's a run that goes absolutely nowhere. And in on that play was uh, Ole Okumbi from Montgomery Blair. He's heading to Kent State, too. And, uh, boy, the, the defense for Maryland's uh, making a statement right here, it looks like. But it's hard to make a statement in these games because, you know, momentum is everything, and neither one of them have it right now. Oh, yeah. Right now it's a little bit uh, feeling the other guys out. All right, Perula back. He's got two to his left, two to his right, a man in the backfield. He takes a snap, drops back to pass, and he's in trouble again, but he's got a man going down the sidelines. He's wide open. Oh, and he just missed him. Wow, what a play. And, boy, I'll tell you what. If he catches, he gets that ball a little on. Nazir Burnett's going for, yeah, he's going for the uh, touchdown all the way. Nazir's going to want to have that one back. That was pretty uh, – I know it was on his fingertips, but – that's one I think he believes he probably ought to caught or should have caught. So, yeah. So there shows the speed of the Pennsylvania uh, wide receivers. He broke free halfway in that route and just pulled ahead of the defender. So uh, that's probably something that the Pennsylvania coaches are going to put in their pocket and remember. And we get a punt, and it's a high hanging punt with a fair catch, and that's. <laughs> it's going to be fair caught. And it looks like it's going to be at about the 33. So Marin will take over. We should take a commercial here for 30 seconds. And we'll be right back with Maryland having the ball on the 32-yard line. Pennsylvania chocolate milk. Official refuel drink of the Big 33 football classic. Beverage of champions. Oh, there's one left. Okay. 
All right, we're back. Maryland has the ball in a 33 after a 52-yard punt. It's a it's a gift to on the left side, and oh, he breaks nice. free, and he's running. He could go. One guy to stop him. What a run down to the 20-yard line. It's Boy, Monday, it's Monday Owens. Great stiff arm there to release him there and uh, show good speed down the left side. He had some good speed. He broke a hole. He went right through, and uh, that's a big gain. Big gain down to the 19-yard line. It's a 53-yard run. I'll tell you what. That was an impressive run, and the left side of the Maryland line made room for him to take off here. Absolutely. Okay, we're back. Three to the right, one to the left. He takes a snap, hands it off, and he goes into the middle, and not much doing in the middle for Jabriel Johnson. Not much doing at all. That Pennsylvania line is going to be tough. Uh, it looks like right now, in my opinion, Eric, uh, this is going to be a game of speed. Yeah, it's all. I mean, you, you know, you've got a pretty, you got a pretty strong wind here today too. So obviously Maryland right now is going into the wind. Uh, PA's last possession, of course, that pass uh, to Burnett was with the wind. So you know, I, I think maybe teetering and finding out too what you can and can't do uh, up top will be important. All right, second and nine on the 18 yard line for Maryland. He's got three to his left, one wide out. He hands the ball up the middle, a little move, and he gets maybe two, three yards off of that play. And that was uh, Wande Owens. Wande Owens is a good, he's a good running back, uh, going to Yale University. Mm -hmm. um, you always fear those smart guys. Yeah, yeah, the smart guys. Can be always tough. fear the smart guys. And we're gonna take a timeout right here. And uh, with no score, Maryland has the ball on the 16-yard line of Pennsylvania. We'll take a commercial break, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services. 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Live here from Landis Field. And uh, George Speed Eversall Stadium. Talk that's, about that's George, correct. Eric. A longtime trainer. I think he coached here for a while. Well-respected. Longtime trainer. I mean, years. We have... We have pictures in the archives of Penn Live too that are uh, we've got probably back in the to the sixties, seventies, you know, yeah. seeing him in there. So uh, great tribute for him. Uh, yeah, it was always Landis Field. It was Landis Field yeah. probably well, I don't wanna I'm gonna say maybe ten years now. They re, they added that. Yep. Yep, he's a, he's a, he's an icon here at Central Dolphin. And uh, we've got a nice crowd out here, a beautiful day, a great breeze blowing. Uh, yeah, thank you for the breeze. Thankfully, the that's breeze is uh, keeping us sane here today. <laughs> All right. <laughs> See where to go. Red here zone, go. Third, and seven or third and seven. And we got movement on the line. Uh, that's, there's my guy. We got a false start. If that was Mr. Christopher. I was a little eager to get back there and cause trouble. <laughs> He gave him a little flinch. Oh no, it was on the offense. There you it go. It was on the offense. Oh, all yep. right. Nope. It was across. It was a man across. See, now you, see, now I you mean, just, if I'm the guy across, now you just ticked him off even two. more. That's yeah. a bad move. Yeah. All right. So now we have third and twelve at the twenty-one yard line for Maryland. Uh, he's got two to his right, two to his left. Takes the snap. He's back to throw the ball, and he's in trouble. There's a. He breaks away, directing traffic, and just gets <laughs> rid of it. <laughs> nice effort, though. It's a nice effort for Boy, late, what a the play. late ditch. What a play. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not trying to be a homer, but I do believe I did see a Pennsylvania jersey twice as large as it should be. But, uh, you know, these <laughs> referees do their best job they can. But, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, improvising is, is a key in these games for quarterbacks many times. So, with a loss of one on that play... Let's make it fourth down and 13 on the 22 yard line. I don't see a field goal kicker now. Of course, uh, Colton McGee is committed to West Virginia on a scholarship, but uh, Maryland has a kicker going to scholarship as a walk-on. So, That's right. 
or uh, to uh, West Virginia, I'm sorry, as a walk-on. So back to pass. He's looking deep. He's got a man, and he's trying, and oh, oh great coverage on the play. Great coverage. Heck of a play, heck of a throw, heck of an attempt, but it well covered. So Pennsylvania takes over on the 22-yard line. But uh, Eric, that was good coverage on the defense. Eric. It was good coverage too, but he had a he had a crack at it. Yes. I mean, that's that, that's a that's a ball. It's catchable. The ball went right where it needed to be. Too. Yep. Yeah. So you expect that from a quarterback in a big 33 game. Yeah, great heave. Yep. All great right. Toss. So in a quarterback right now is our friend from McDevitt, Kane Everson. Or Harrisburg. Or Harrisburg. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, they'll bite you for that one here. <laughs> Everson lets one go. And, oh, nearly caught on his sidelines. But uh, incomplete. That was uh, Yusef Terry. And Yusef Terry can catch a ball. Well, I went he up to a ball. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. A.J. Woods made a great play there, too. It was a good step play. Step for step with him. Went up for the ball. Made a really strong defensive play. Pennsylvania came to state. Went to state college for their first practice. And uh, one, of the, one of the highlights we saw was Yusef Terry did not drop a ball. Probably yeah. for 30 passes. And the first time he dropped one, he dropped and did 20 push-ups on his own. <laughs> so we got a run to the middle, and that pretty much loses probably a yard on that play. And that was Aaron Young out of Coatesville. Of course, Aaron knows how to run the ball. Yeah, 1,600 plus yards last year. Yeah. It's not to mention all the all the fantastic things he does defensively. So right now, basically what you can say about this game is we've had one play. Um, and that's why Pennsylvania is on the 21-yard line uh, due to that 53-yard run from Maryland. Yep, big so run. both offenses are struggling, and we thought they would shine in this game, but the, you know, so the defenses are doing their job. So Kane Everson has three to his right, takes the snap, drops back to pass, rolls, and this mm. is what he does. He gets out of trouble, throws the ball, and this nice time... That's a catch by Burnett. That's a great catch. This time Burnett catches that ball. That, and that was a good – that was typical of Burnett. That's the thing, too. Like, you know, I mean, if, if Kane there tucks the ball and runs, he gets to the 50 anyway. But he's really been an underrated passer for most of his career, really. I mean, he was a starter. He was a starter. His career started at Central Dolphin East, and he was a starting quarterback. And then they moved him to wide receiver, which is a position he really, really likes. He really liked to play that in, co in college, and that's probably where they're going to end up using him at William & Mary. But right. as a passer, he's been tremendous. <laughs> it's a, Gibson from Aliquippa hits the ground pretty hard there, and uh, you know you, you, you don't, you don't want to see him slip, but uh, that's a lost one on the inside handoff there. So we have a second and 10, at the, or second and 11, I'm sorry, at the 50 yard, or 49 yard line for Pennsylvania. Gibson's a pretty good athlete, and uh, you know sometimes it, you get on different turf. You might not have the different the right shoes or whatnot. So a man goes in motion, and Kane fakes the handoff. He takes the handoff oh, and nice gets the up. edge, and we're gonna have a flag on the play. And uh, they see a helmet laying on the ground, and that's uh, Trent Holler from Greater Latrobe. His helmet's laying on the ground, and already, Eric, it's getting chippy down there. Yeah, these, these, these teams have a bit, of, a bit of a history now. Yeah, uh, the, the win by Maryland last year gave them confidence. And, uh, you know, because uh, for the first couple of years they played each other, it, was, it wasn't pretty, but we got a penalty. Well, that's the thing, too. It wasn't, it wasn't a victory, too, that was, you know, 45-42. Uh, you know, you know where, where you gave up 42 points to Pennsylvania. I mean, you, you held Pennsylvania to six without a touchdown. I mean, that's that's digging in, Yeah. you know. And you could take a lot of pride in that. And they certainly bring a lot of pride into this game every year. So we got a 15-yard penalty on this one. Uh, gives Pennsylvania a first down at the 34-yard line. We're not going to call out anybody, but, you know, things happen in these games. So, Everson brings the team out. He's got two to his left, two to his right. Running back to his left. And we have to call a timeout. So, while we're on timeout on the field, we'll take a timeout on the air. 
and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, eyesight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. We're on. We're back. Well, Eric, what do you think of this game so far? Uh, you know, I think it's as expected. I mean, this game will definitely start opening up. I mean, it's not, you know, again, you, you, you know, you're out of the, you're off the field for what? Almost, well, five full months. You know, you've only had maybe four to five practices. You're not going full tilt. You're not full gear and everything like that. Um, some of these other guys are just coming off baseball or other sports, you know, or track. Yep. I mean, heck, there's probably, you know, between Maryland and Pennsylvania, there's probably 10 to 12 guys who have competed in their track championships in the last two weeks. Our guys just in the last two days. I think we have, uh, so, you know, it, it'll take three, a little time. Three gold medals on the uh, Pennsylvania team. It's yeah. Done. We do. Uh, Marlon Devonshire won two, the 100 and the 200. So, yeah, I think I think this game is, you know, it's it, it always typically takes a little while to get rolling, but once these guys get in a rhythm, I think we're going to see the offenses open up, and it's going to be a good game. It's going to be a you know we're a little game. lucky too up here in the in the box too where we get it's shady, we got a breeze going. I mean it's it's, right. it's hot down there in the field, you know. Mm-hmm. All right, well Burnett's out there. He's got a running back to his right. The receiver goes in motion. He drops back, and he's in trouble. But you know what? That's what he does, and he gets away, and Ooh. he... i tell you what. He paid for that, he too. He paid for that. Okay, this, this D-back, this, Christian Lassane from Wild Park, that's twice now that he's fi- he's come up flying to the football. The last one, he just missed Kane when he had to scramble and leak out to the right side. That time, he didn't miss. So we have a loss of two on the play. So we're going to have a second down, or a third down. Make that a second down and 12. Yeah, the uh, the Maryland defense looks fast. They do look fast. So we got three wide outs to the left. Keen Everson takes the ball from the center and drops back and lets one go deep, and there's nobody there. We had a miscommunication on the play. Um, I'm not sure if somebody threw a – and then we have a late flag. I think Mason may have been, may have been, or Everson may have thought Mason was going to run a post route. Instead, he kind of run a, like a, kind of a slant. You can see Mason shaking his hands. Yeah, like, what, am I, what did we do? What was that? Yeah, I think this penalty is going to go against Maryland here. Um, I'm not sure. It might have been. It was probably this was probably one of those uh, illegal lineups in this game. Uh, they, they, yeah, they, they called they it had somebody procedure. on the line that shouldn't have been on the line, and uh, there are separate rules for this game that are a little different than a regular game. So, and we have a crew down there. The Big Thirty Three does have a crew on both sides of the lines, and they're watching for that stuff. And uh, I believe it was Mike Farr from uh, Schuylkill Haven who called that penalty from the sideline. So, second and seven. We're on the 31-yard line. Kane Everson's in there. He's got Aaron Young to his left. Rucci in motion. He drops back oh. and he rolls to his left. He's got a man going deep into the end zone. And it's Burnett. And what a catch. And Pennsylvania strikes first on a 31-yard touchdown pass. And that is number eight, Yusef Terry, who went up in the air and got that ball, Eric. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I give credit there to the receiver, but also to Kane. I mean, he just he just stretched it out, stretched it out. The guy underneath. Yeah, Yusef Terry did a great job of reaching for the ball, but it was Kane Everson who made a great pass. And when you're rolling left like that, that that's a tough that's a tough throw to make. You know, but it, uh, he saw him going. Yeah, even on a second and seven, they leaked out Hayden Rucci, the tight end, who just held his block for a second and then leaked on out. But he was well covered. And the King just stretched it out to his left. And of course, he's a left-handed thrower and threw a really nice pass to Terry. 
Anthony De Silva puts the ball well through the uprights. Now Anthony is the third, this is the third year in a row that Pennsylvania has had a Penn State kicker on their team. And of course, Anthony De Silva is walking on to Penn State right. this year. So with the score seven nothing at the 311 mark in the first quarter, we'll be back after a commercial from our sponsors. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. All right, we're back at Landis Field, and uh, Pennsylvania takes the first lead uh, with the help of a penalty and a good play by the wide receiver to go up. Yusuf Terry made a great catch. Short kick to the 20-yard line. The up man takes it. He's up to the 30. He's at the 40 to the 46-yard line where Maryland's going to have good field position on this, on this play. And of course, today on our broadcast, we've got the live stat tracker. So if you're watching on your PC or on your phone right now, you can click on the side, the little lines up at the top on your on your phone, and uh, you can see the live statistics as, as the game lays out right now. Of course, uh, we don't have much of a statistic right now. We have one long run and one long passing play that's got us <laughs> where we're at. So here we go, Maryland on the 46 yard line. And that's a run, and he falls to the ground again. Uh, there must be, there might be something with the turf, but that was Devin Dawkins from from Howard down in Maryland, uh, just tried to turn the corner. <laughs> yeah, that's a out. tough. Uh, we've seen a couple guys now in that between the forties. Yeah. Uh, Burnett had a slip earlier. Yeah, and we wonder, you know, I mean, the field looks like it's been used pretty, you know, so. Um, there could be something going on with the rubber, and it could be the heat too. You know, yeah, the heat just could be a little greasy. Rubber. You know, so got rubber pellets in the heat. Second and fourteen for Maryland. He's got three wide receivers to his right. He hands the ball. Nope, he takes a takes the ball and goes left, and gets maybe two yards back to the line. That's Slee from Oakdale. There we go. A little shoving. And, uh, let's hope they. Calm down a little bit, but well, you know, that's these things tend to fester. Like I said, you know, you get a little bit, you get a little bit uh, tuckered out a little quicker in this game because you haven't haven't had the pads on in a while. It's hot down there in the field. Yep. Things get a little frustrating when you don't, you know, rack linemen, up the yardage like you want. Are angry anyway. Or if the guy on the other side of you is beating you up a little bit, these things tend to fester. Yeah. All right, <laughs> here we go. Third and eight. There's a four-yard carry by Slee on that play. So he's got two men to his left, two to his right. They both bail. He's in trouble, and he gets away from it. And oh, he slipped too. Right? He slipped on the ground. There, there. Now that's about that's the third time we've seen somebody slip trying to make a move. Give him six yards to the 46-yard line. We're, we're going to have a fourth down and two to go. So I don't know what you do here. Uh, I mean, you're on the 46-yard line. You're going to punt. And back deep, Marlon Devonshire. Of course, Marlon Devonshire tied the national record for punt returns for a touchdown this year at Aliquippa with nine. Uh, and we know he can fly. And, of course, on his left side, he so he gets the ball and just steps out of bounds. He just so wants to get one of those. And we've got there a little extra go. activity. 
Yeah, I would, I would, I would walk away from number seventeen. Dude, I would I just, walk I would away. just turn and walk away from seventeen. I, I don't. Still a little John going on. Yeah, there. I, I just, but I uh, you know, Brandon George. I don't think you want to mess with Brandon George down there. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't. I don't think that's something that you want to do down there. I mean, I don't. All right. So Pennsylvania has the ball on the twenty-yard line. Taking him out to the field is. Kate Prabola, uh, Kate's a gunslinger. Kate, 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 Kate is a gun. That would be an accurate description. He can of connect on a pass. Yeah. So Kate's got three guys to his left, three receivers left, one to his right. He's got a running back to his right side. He takes a snap, drops back, throws a quick out, and it hits the ground. That was intended for Aaron Young. Aaron Young, and uh, just a little misconnect there, and you know. You're a quarterback on that play. You can either make that play a lot or not. Um, sometimes you see guys get that play a little short. You're not used to the speed of Aaron Young uh, to your left right now. Maybe that could be it. But uh, in any case, it's a second down and 10 yards. Yeah, I would try to design about three or four of those plays for number four because he is electrifying when he turns the corner. He's going right up we're top again. To we're going way up top, and it's intended for Terry again, and he bobbles it and makes the catch. Great coverage there by Osita Smith, but boy, another stellar catch from Yusef Terry, and, and he again, bobbled it. Yeah, and, and again, that, uh, I'm not sure people realize how difficult that throw was. Um, you've got a wind that you're going with the wind, you got a guy like Terry, who's probably a, I don't know, may, he might be a sub 4 4 guy. All right, and, uh, and it's a thir it's a 35 yard heave. I mean, that's. 35, and we got a first and 10 on the 36. We're going to change the pace. We're going to hurry up. And there's a handoff up the middle, and that's our I boy. think we've got our first positive play. That's Patrick Garwo, and once again, we can't have this on the field. This is just, oh, you got this, this is a bar on the game. So let's go away to commercial right now, and we'll come back in 30 seconds, and we'll let this calm down. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, EyeSight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. 
Everyone, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with The Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports could not be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. Okay, we're back. So the big 33 game from Landis Field, and uh, you know, rather unfortunately, Eric, to, to start the second quarter uh, or to end the first quarter, I'm sorry, we, we had some skirmishes going on on the field, and uh, you know, in a game like this, when you're tr when you're when you're trying to protect the game of football, and you're trying to build up a game that you know needs to be built up. It, this has always been one of the marquee games, and it struggled a couple of years. You you can't have you, you can't have uh, skirmishes on the field. Well, the problem just isn't on the field. I mean, that's what happens is is the people who are the naysayers about maybe continuing this game. It's not what it used to be. Uh, they'll never build it up to what it used to be 30 years ago when they when it got you know 10,000, 12,000 people in the seats. You know, the naysayers just point to this this episode. Well, look, if they're gonna just get to show up and fight. You know, or there's going to be a skirmish after every play. Then what do we need it for? You know, yeah. and and you know the coaches know that, players know that deep down. I get you're protecting your teammates and things like this, but in a game like this, you never want to see punches thrown. No, absolutely. You know, uh, pushing and shoving. You know, a little jaw, a little friendly John, not a problem. These guys are these guys are used to that. But you know, when you see a guy down and a punch is thrown. Uh, that's that's crossing the line. Yeah, I, you know the last three or four plays have gotten a little chippy on the field, and uh, you know I'm not a big fan of that to begin with. I, I I agree. You know you have to be aggressive, but uh, you know this is an important game. This is a big game. This is a game to mark for for marquee players, and that's what you want to do. So after it shakes out, we had a penalty on Pennsylvania. It's second down and twenty-two on the forty-eight yard line. And we did Bobola start the, the second off. quarter. Aaron Young gets to the corner, makes a move, and gets a few yards up to about the 40. Give him to the 40-yard line, so an eight-yard carry for Aaron Young. And again, after that play, we saw a little extracurricular stuff. Brian Tashinsky is walking on the field. So here we go, third and 15. Pennsylvania has the ball, Pergabola back. To his right is uh, Patrick Garwell from Conwegan. Two men to his left, he drops back the pass. Big rush comes in and mm. he takes a hit as he releases the ball and it goes incomplete. 11 is still the right? Yeah. So here we are. Well, so far, I mean, I, I know there's a there's a good amount of size and speed on Maryland's side, but so so, so far, I don't think Pennsylvania's offensive line is kind of living up to expectations. They're getting beat think, on the edges. Yeah, they're getting beat on the edges, and, and Pabula and Everson have delivered everything they can from outside the pocket. Of course, Elias marked it to the right, on the right side of the line, but it looks like it's the left side of the line that uh, the Maryland players are eating on. So here we go, we've got a fourth and 15. We're gonna go for it, Prabola back, takes the snap and he drops back the pass. He's got some protection this time and he throws it deep and it's intercepted and... That's a nice, nice play there. Yeah, it's a good play. It's like a punt at the 11 yard line. So it's similar to a punt. Maryland takes the ball. Uh, first, Sam Malsheimer. First turnover of the game. So that was an interception on the play. 
So Team Maryland will take over on the 11 yard line. And 34, we'll yeah, Sam Alzheimer yes. from Glen Eak. And we'll see Made what, the tackle before the second one. We'll see what Maryland has here. Uh, they really haven't done much on offense since one play. So uh, they had one play, and it was a running play. So first and 10 at the 11. Maryland's got the ball. They bring him out. Back at cool, but quarterback is Ryan Lay. He's got a running back to his right. It looks like Jabril Johnson, and he hands it on the inside, and he stopped at the line and drives forward for four yards, making the stop on that play, Brandon George. Yeah, good run by Jabril Johnson there, too. I mean, a, little, a quick little hole there opened up. He got four big yards. You know, that's something they sort of needed until until that last until the last big run. Well, since that last big run, um, they've been sort of pecking on the outside a little bit. So to get four yards up the middle is a good sign. Yeah, but one of the, um, one of the guys I like out there right now is Bam Bremen, number 57. He's a big, tall kid. He's also going to pit right now. And uh, he's, he's a good defensive player, too. Uh, he moved over and sealed the hole on that play. But uh, second down, six yards to go. Lee puts a man in motion, gives the man, gives the ball, and he gets the edge and gets a couple of yards, and he's still fighting. And give him maybe three yards for Desmond Shell for Milford Mills. Uh, it is a nice little play to the outside, and I think that's what we need to do here. We need Maryland needs to see that. They need to calm it down and just run some plays and see what they can do here. Yeah, you know, you want to find a little bit of rhythm too. You don't want to just sort of have third and seven. You got to take your pop, you know, over the top. I mean, that sort of thing. You know, yeah, part of a good offense too is wearing down your defense. So I mean, you know, if you can get a few chains moved, you know, maybe pick up two, three first downs, and and you call and lull them and sleep a little bit, and then you can reach up top. And on a day like today, it's not hard to wear a defensive line down. No, it's not. I mean, you, you can do it. So we've got third and three on the 18-yard line. He Lee takes the ball. He gets the edge, and he's a good runner. We've seen mm -hmm. him run, and he does get the first down, making the stop there for Pennsylvania. Yeah, ta yeah Tally and Bremer were in the play. Yep. So it's a first down at the 23-yard line for Maryland. He's a good running quarterback. I mean, you he know, is. Yeah, I mean, at six four, seen. you know, he's six four on. I guess around run ninety five. Um, you know, lanky, but um, but moves well. Yes, I agree. Uh, Jabril Johnson is in the backfield again with Lee, and he's got one wide. Takes a snap, and he's running again, and. He's trying to get the edge, and this time the Pennsylvania kind of seals it up. Brandon George directed it outside, and it looked like Brock Grosser was in on that play. Number 23. Give him one yard. We got second and nine. So it looks like we're going after the Pennsylvania edges on defense and on offense. Ideally, you'd like to see if you're gonna if you are gonna attack the edges too. Though you'd like to see Johnson probably have it in his hands, or even if you can get a quick swing out um, here to Brevin Easton, which has been a really good fun matchup actually going against. Um, yeah, there it was going against Devonshire out here one on one. Yep, literally and that was Brevin <laughs> Easton and, 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 and Devonshire just like, as you as you mentioned it, and uh, the ball was a little overthrown. Uh, good coverage there by Devonshire. Devonshire's so good. He's so hard to beat. He's an incredible player. And, uh, you know, having the pleasure to see him. And uh, as we have a timeout, why don't we go to timeout? We'll be back in about a minute. And uh, we'll see what happens the rest of this half. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of Champions.
Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, eyesight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119, south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. at IUP now is that right we are back uh, welcome back 745 to go in a second seven nothing Pennsylvania leads we were just talking about some former players that are on the field here on the sidelines from this game and, uh, we noticed one former player playing the game last year his father's the chairman this year is uh, Brandon Clark so we'll give out give a shout out to Brandon Clark who is at Syracuse right now or um, I'm sorry, Slippery Rock University right now. Slippery Rock, yeah. So, third and nine, Maryland has the ball, Schley back, in a shotgun, takes the snap, drops back, looks, lets the ball go, he's got a guy open, and boy, I'll tell you what. Well, that's, that's there's a guy we haven't mentioned yet, only because they have, they're probably smart, haven't thrown his way, and that's Tyke Smith. Tyke <laughs> Smith Memo was loaded up and waiting for the receiver uh, to catch that ball. Yeah. And, uh, I think it's lucky for the receiver, the angle Smith had, he did not catch that ball. Tyke's been, uh, if, you, if you're in the rankings, he's been up there in the, as a top D-back for probably the past two and a half years. Um, <laughs> tremendous, tremendous athletes going to West Virginia. All right, so here we go. We've got Carr and Devishar deep for the punt. Merrill punt. And the punter is at his own 10-yard line. It's a low snap, and he gets the kick away. And it's a high-hanging kick. And no return. It's just like, MJ learned his lesson from yes. the first one, I guess. He's so mad he can't get one, though. He's so upset. I'm kind of mad, too. I'd like to see him get one and see what he can do. He'll get, um, he'll get one. I don't, I mean, if he if he could get one, to, a run back on one of these punts, uh, I would personally give him the national record, although I don't believe it would be an, yeah, I don't an think official record, but... Uh, to ten, I mean, to have ten in your senior year, that would count, right? Yeah, that's crazy. That's just ludicrous. <laughs> Nine in one season of football. I uh, talked to his head coach, and uh, they said uh, the second half of the season, nobody kicked it to him. They would just kick the ball out of bounds. So, first and ten on the 17-yard line. Kane Everson hands the ball off. And he gets a couple, maybe two, three yards. Maybe two. They gave him a pretty good spot. You get a little, they're giving him a little more than I thought he got, but hey, you know what? Who am I to say so? Uh, I want to give a shout out to Dominic Serpiglia down there. He's doing a great job on that offensive line. Um, uh, had his man about 15 yards downfield. So, second down. Give him a. Short nine yards. Fakes the handoff, breaks it left and to the right. He gets the edge and he gets a few yards. And, you know, we talked about his passing skills, but let's face it, Kane Everson can make things happen with his legs. It's 20, you know, almost 4,000 yards, total yards last season. Hey, 2,800 passing yards, right around 2,800 passing yards. He was over 1,000 in rushing, 41 total touchdowns, and of course, uh, he, he made St. Joe's prep in the 6A final uh, a little bit worse. He had them in that game until the last few minutes, uh, just on sheer will, really. Uh, it was an amazing performance. One of the best senior seasons that I've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, he did a good job. So here we go. First and 10 on the 31 yard line, Pennsylvania. The ball gets handed off. And falling forward for maybe three yards on the play. 
And that looked like Aaron Young, number four. Yeah, good run by Young. I mean, it's just... Things are settling it's... down on the field. The, the trenches are digging in. And, uh, you know, that's that's a big defensive line they're pushing against. I mean, Davion Johnson from Edwood, I mean, he's a big kid. Big guy, 6'3", 285, big wingspan. So you've got your work cut out for you trying to block him. And then you look over on the other side, and you've got another huge mountain of a man. Kane Everson gets the edge, and there he goes. And there's another play where Kane Everson gets the edge. Solomon brings him down, but not after a long game. And he's in Maryland territory again. Kane Everson does it all by himself on that one just about. That's what number seven does. He's been doing it for four years. Like I said, and you, I don't know where they're going to play him, William & Mary, but uh, imagine this guy, even if you put him in the slot, you know, as a slot, he's, I mean, he's quick like a cat. You mentioned yesterday. He, he's going to be a heck of a ball player He's going to play receiver, so he brings him yep. to the line. They're on a 46-yard line. First down, Aaron Young in motion, and he gets the ball. He goes out to the edge. Yep. He gets the edge, and that's what Young does, and Young is he's an impressive running back, uh, you know, on his own accord. And uh, that's gets a, gets a good chunk of yards. He's heading to Rutgers University, and uh, that's a good get by Rutgers up there. Oh, tremendous, tremendous gap. You know, originally a Michigan State recruit, uh, and then weighed up on Rutgers. But that's where you see the, the guy's skill. And you, you look at a guy like Aaron Young, you go, okay, I get it. Um, you know, Pekin just sort of slowed himself down a little bit till he found it. Boom, hit that fifth gear, got a big gain around the left side. All right. So we've got a receiver package in. Hayden Rucci comes off to the sidelines. Three men to his left. He's got a running back up there. Hands just gets in trouble. Boy, I thought he was going to give the ball off to Patrick Garwo. And I think he saw the defenders were about to swallow the entire play and thought better of yeah. it. And held yeah. on to the ball. That's what it looked like to me. That's just a break. That's just a breakdown on the offensive line. It's all that is. I mean, you know. That guy should not be three yards in the backfield within a second of the ball. Maybe Sarah I mean, Piglia, Mertuzzi from North Hills up there. Um, Got to do a better job for Pennsylvania. However, give Maryland I, credit I, for breaking through, you know. Second along, how do you not go back to Terry? One-on-one -on -one out here. Yep. Uh, and uh, he's yep. looking that way, and there, there goes go. the ball. And Terry's fighting, and... Uh, it's got to be interference, huh? Boy. Uh, they were locked up, so... They were kind of locked up. That was equal play. And so we've got a third and long situation, and uh, we'll see what Mark Lyons from Central Valley. Mark Lyons is a great coach in his own right. Always has Central Valley out in the Whitfield in the running every year. He's a great coach, a great guy. But, uh, sure, when you got guys like Robert Foster and Jordan Whitehead in your backfield, yes. you better be run, you better be winning some football games out there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So, <laughs> Kane Everson drops back. He's got a man that goes in motion, fakes the handoff. He looks, he jukes, and Kane Everson, they get, they call his number to get the first down, and Kane Everson gets close to the first down. He's about a yard shy on that play, so give him a 12-yard carry on that one. And a great call by the coaching staff on that play. Yeah, I'm not sure the coaching staff called that one, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, Kane had the option there, but I, I don't know. I, I, I think you put a what do you put a full you put full house backfield. You got all right, Rucci's back up. And look who's out on offense right now, number seventeen. And here comes Wheeler too, Tristan Wheeler. Tristan Wheeler, we've got a heavy a package, so uh, I think we're going to see a run here. I think you're going to see, yeah. You know, are they going to is, is Kane going to keep yeah, it? Or we're going to give the pass to Garwell. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're going to call a timeout. On the air here, Pennsylvania has a 7 0 lead. They're on the 20 yard line with one yard to go in less than two minutes. We'll be back after a word from our sponsors. Everyone, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with the Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, 
The Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with The Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. Fifty seconds left in the second quarter. Six, seven, and nothing. Pennsylvania leads. They need one yard line, and they've got anybody that has any power in line out there. So where do you think this ball's going? Uh, right side, yeah. probably to Patrick Garwo. You've got. But again, it's Kane Averson taking the snap, so he may just run left. You never know. And just try to beat everybody. You don't know. You've got Brandon but you've got George, Brandon George. Out there. You've got Hayden Rucci. Uh, uh, that's a that's a that's a lot of power on the Wheeler. right side of that line. Yeah. So let's see where they go. He does go right, indeed, yeah, and he gets the yard right they up. need. And I'll tell you what, um, Maryland wasn't fooled, and they didn't stick to that. He <laughs> only got a yard, but uh, it was maybe two. So we're down. Pennsylvania gets a first down on the 17 yard line, but boy, what a power package they had! Out yeah, there. you don't want to mess with that power package. That was good. <laughs> That nice stick, a, though. That was, a, that was a nice play. So, Yusef Terry's back out on the field, a wide receiver. And Nazir Burnett goes to the left side. Terry to the right. You know, Jane don't, don't overlook J Johnny Freeman, too. 45's in a slot. Uh, you go right and to here Terry. Here he goes, right to Terry. And that was an incomplete pass. And, again, good coverage. Ball was thrown a little short. It yeah, ball higher. was short there on he that one. He didn't give him a chance to catch that ball. So, what? Uh, but it's, it's obvious uh, Everson's a big fan of, of uh, Yusuf Terry over there. I think you, sh I think you pro by rights, you should be, uh, considering he's got the only touchdown of the, of the game so far. Right. Uh, he's going to Baylor to play wide receiver. Normally that's, uh, that means you're pretty good. Not to take away <laughs> anything from Nazir Burnett, who's going to, oh, by the way, Georgia Tech. Yeah, exactly. You know, so, yeah. I mean, you look at the, the wide receivers that are out there. We've got Baylor. We've got Georgia Tech. We've got... Pittsburgh, and good we've hard. got a play that goes nowhere. Yeah. And good, hard, good hard run by Garwell. It was a good hard run. And well defended, too. I mean, it's, you know, he gets him three, four yards. Boy, let's talk about Garwell for a second. You know, last night at the pep rally and, uh, you know, seeing him at practice, Garwell is just built. He is a big, he's, big He's kind of like a, we always call guys like that who could run like, a, you know, he's kind of like a, like a fire hydrant, but a fast fire hydrant. And he's the kind of kid, too, he he likes contact. Like, I mean, yeah, sure, everybody likes to run in open space, but he really bounces off contact really, really well. And uh, not a big kid. I mean, not tall-wise. You know, he's right around 5'10". Um, but, man, he can move. When he gets in open space, look out. Yeah, he's a good player. Uh, you know, I saw him, I think you were there, too, for the Middletown game right. when they played Middletown. Middletown bottled him up. You know, so unfortunately, I didn't get to see the full potential live, but I've watched right. his film, and he's just a really good running back. Well, and, I thought that the, the power is impressive. The interesting thing of me, I thought Conwell Egan did a, a sort of a, a, a tactical error on that one. I know he was bottled up first half. He had, I believe, he had seven rushes for five yards. He touched the ball twice in the, in the second, second half, half. Yes, and that's your go-to guy. So you have to, you have to go into halftime and find ways to get him the ball. Outside of the perimeter, you right, have to. Third and, eight. and they didn't do it. Oh, oh we got a reverse, a little double reverse, and it's Yusef Terry, there he and he gets in the end zone for a 15-yard boy. What? They reached in the bag of tricks on that one, did uh, Mark Lyons? <laughs> and uh, I'll yeah. tell you what, that's a tough play yes. to make on a team that's only practiced five times. It is tough, and I, I will give Coach Lyons all the credit for that one. <laughs> Uh, he found a way, another way to get the ball to Yusuf Terry's hands. Uh, Fifteen just, yard. That's uh, a credit reverse. to Coach Lincoln down at Imhotep. Um, Imhotep doesn't have the greatest facilities in the world, and no, uh, as a not. matter of fact, uh, Imhotep Charter has some 
they don't have good facilities at all. But every year, Coach Lincoln does a great job down there. And beforehand, Coach Alvey, uh, they always have players down there. Um, they want to get out of that area. And they know football is a good route to get out. So the, yep. the kick is good. Colton McGee with the eight extra McGee. point. So Colton McGee registers a point on the play. And with 52 seconds left, it's 14 to nothing Pennsylvania. We'll take a break and we'll come back after 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. So I'm like about a three minute break. All right, we're back and uh, ready for the kick. Colton McGee's got the leg and he puts the ball clear into the end zone and took out the one yard line. Actually, I thought it was going to the end zone and a big collision at the line. I saw a mouthpiece go flying. And I tell you what, Miles Talley from St. Joe's Prep just laid into that return man. And uh, boy, what a, what a, what a run. Yeah, Tally's one of the smallest guys on the field, too. He just came down and put a rip in him. Good return, though. I mean, 5'10", 205, but uh, good return on the play. Good return. Maryland's in business at the 32-yard line. And, uh, you know, I'd like to see Maryland put something together here. It would be good to see to see Maryland go down. I, I, you know, the one thing I wish, I wish they would give each team a nickname. You know? Yeah, that would be That'd nice, be yeah. Nice. Maybe nice. maybe that's something we could reach out to the public and have a poll and come up with a team PA a, and the team do a contest. Yeah, should that's do, it. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have to talk to uh, the guys from the PSFCA and maybe we can have a mascot contest. You know, that would work. The Keystones and the the Terps or. Are... All right, we're gonna take a timeout here uh, with 50, 46 seconds left. Pennsylvania up fourteen to nothing. Let's take a sponsor break and we'll be back in thirty seconds. Mike. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. Everyone, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with the Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once the team or athletic department... Back into uh, Maryland with the ball. Actually drops back to Plash. He's in trouble. He's under pressure. He lets the ball go downfield. He's got a man, and he just missed him. Boy, I'll tell you what. If he could have connected with Desmond Shell. He had him streaking open, but he was under pressure, so, you know, uh, just wasn't able to make that play. So 39 seconds left, second and 10 on the 32-yard line. Maryland has the ball, and uh, we'll see what happens here. Ryan Lay will be uh, close to Pease, He's going to Shippensburg. Yes, he is going to Shippensburg. That was a good get by, by Shippensburg. PSAC player. PSAC uh, fans will be interested to know that. We big, love the PSAC kid. here in Pennsylvania. Um, you know, the PSAC is, is the pride of Pennsylvania. Uh, we've got some good football here. We've also got oh, some milkshakes. Wow, that's fabulous. I mean, lay 6'5". Yeah. That was a nice football, too. Yes, sir. 
So now we've got third and 10 for Maryland, 34 seconds. Um, you want to see Maryland get something done here. You, you I think, uh, you know, being third down, I, I'm not sure I want to give the ball back to Pennsylvania. Yeah, not right now I don't, no. Uh, especially, you know, with Devonshire itching to get a return in, any return. So I think you take a high percentage pass here and then maybe take a shot later. On roll. Or you wing it in the he middle. He lets him go, of the field. and it's intercepted at the 41 yard line. And boy, I'll tell you what. That's Tyke Smith from Imhotep. And he returns the ball down to the 30 yard line, and that's not a good thing for Team Maryland. I mean, what's the golden rule? When you're, when you're scrambling, what's the golden rule? You never throw never back throw toward back. the middle of the field. Never throw back. Because you never quite have the arm you think you're going to have, and it just came up well short. Tyke Smith, we talked about him early in the broadcast. One of the best defensive backs in the country. West Virginia bound, picks it off. Does a little one-handed pick off. Big return to the 30 of Maryland. 19.5 seconds left now. You got two really good kickers. I think you're probably going to need a little bit, maybe 10 yards. I don't you think are, so. With Colton McGee. Ah, but you are into the win. You are into the win. We saw a record 56 last we year. We did, absolutely. And so, he's kicking at Penn State now. So. Yes, he's at Penn State. Vlad. Vlad the Impaler. All right. Here's a short shuttle. shuttle and yes. it looks like they're yeah. setting up for a kick. I'm not quite sure what that was. So that was Hayden Rucci. Um, and again, here we go. That's to the 30-yard line. We got a timeout. We have five seconds left. We're on the 30-yard line. To make it a 47-yard field goal into the wind. There's no question Hayden Roots is a matchup problem, but I'd much rather see him going down the seam than running that shuffle pass to him, especially in that situation. So Pennsylvania takes a timeout. I think they're stopped. They're trying to wait uh, for the wind to stop, maybe. Anthony De Silva's in. It's not Colton. Yeah, it's not. It's De Silva. He's got a leg, too. He oh, yeah. I think he's got a long of uh, 49 yards or something like that. So De Silva's going to try and kick a 47? 47 yard field goal here. I tell Again, you. The was... record is 57, set last year by Vlad Hilling of Haldisburg, who's now at Penn State. So. We, we're on the 37 yard line. He drops back. De Silva comes up to the ball. And it's not going to make it. It falls a little bit short. So, with the halftime score 14 to nothing, let's take a couple of seconds from the. And hear a word from our sponsors from the Pennsylvania Dairy Association. And we'll come right back. Pennsylvania Chocolate Milk, official refueled drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. Sit over here in the shop with your milkshakes. Right behind her. Let me know when we're back. All right, we're back, and uh, we want to thank the Pennsylvania Dairymen's Association for supplying the milkshakes to our entire crew up here in the uh, press box, and uh, what a great job, and thank you very much. Support your local milk sellers and the PA Dairymen's Association. We'll be back right after these words from our sponsors. <laughs> That's a good tree right there, gang. Give us about a four minute break, okay? We'll stay away for a little bit. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. 
And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with The Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, EyeSight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Pennsylvania Chocolate Milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of Champions. 
Everyone, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with the Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history and we welcome all of the players, the families and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Pennsylvania Chocolate Milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of Champions. Next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, EyeSight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Everyone, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with the Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. 
Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. down and let them know downstairs um, also all right welcome back it's halftime here at Landis Field in Central Dolphin Stadium and uh, interesting game so far Eric we've had some slow starts some skirmishes and then some explosions by the Pennsylvania team and we talked about it before the game we kind of thought Maryland was going to have a problem with the team speed that uh, Pennsylvania has on the outside edges, and Yusef Terry is a machine. Yeah, Yusef Terry has both Pennsylvania touchdowns. Obviously, uh, one by one by air, one by land, on a, on a very nicely called um, trick play by Coach Lyons there toward the end of the half. Um, Terry's just one of those things. I mean, Maryland really hasn't gotten much going offensively other than the big run by Owens in the, in the first quarter. 53-yard um, run, I think, that got him down there, but they couldn't they couldn't pay off. So, you know, really, Maryland's, Maryland's front, Maryland's interior sort of is keeping them in this game. Um, they're getting pressure on Kane Everson and Kay Prabula, and they're also sort of doing a pretty good job uh, um, against the running backs. I, if, I'm if I'm not mistaken, if you count the sacks in, uh, or the TFLs, I think Pennsylvania's probably a negative yards rushing. So, uh, you know, that's that's as, that's as good as you can do. And I'll be honest with you, I don't think Maryland has much positive yards either. They had one play, you know, they've, they've gone backwards a lot of plays, and uh, they had one long play that yeah. got them some yardage. Yeah, that's been it. Uh, Wins run was the only one real, real big play for them. They missed, um, Schley missed a, a guy down the field early on. And other than that, Pennsylvania's defense has pretty much stood tall. I mean, they really got had Maryland hasn't gotten any rhythm yet. Pennsylvania found a little bit more rhythm uh, with Kane in there under center. Um, so I suspect early on in the second half, if I'm Coach Lyons, I'm probably coming out taking a big shot or two early to kind of get this to a three touchdown lead, and then then you can sort of mix in your run because again, you know, the running game really hasn't done much so far at all for Pennsylvania. Yeah, and uh, other than I'll tell you what, uh, as I said, you know, Maryland has 20 plays. They have 84 total yards in the game. Uh, Pennsylvania has 185 yards, in a, in, you know, uh, 51 yush, rushing yards compared to 81 rushing yards for uh, Pennsylvania. So it's a little higher, mm -hmm. uh, 104 yards of passing compared to three yards for Maryland for Pennsylvania. And I think that's a tough point right there for Maryland as uh, – you know, they're, they're just not being able to get it through the air. Turnovers, one-to-one -one right now, and uh, punting yards, uh, you know, punting yards, three for 52 average, and Pennsylvania has one for 51 yards. Uh, so, I mean, it's one of those games that just it looks like Maryland is struggling in the air. Yeah, they are. And I, I think early on, too, the wind was a little bit more fierce early on. Now it's sort of stagnant. Uh, if you look at the goalposts, the, you know, the, the ribbons aren't really floating anymore. It's gotten hotter. Uh, it's gotten a bit more steamer as the sun is now directly over the field. Uh, so that's going to be tough for these guys, too, in the second half. I think they're going to start to wear out a little bit. Um, so, again, I think if Pennsylvania can get that to a three-touchdown lead, feel a little safer about maybe stealing some minutes 
you know, with your guys in the run game. And you can always give it to number seven to steal yeah. a few side to side, a few minutes with his with his crazy carnival runs. So, Kane Everson has 60 yards through the air. Prabola with 44. Kane is uh, two of five. Prabola two of six. Uh, rushing, we've got Kane Everson has 42 yards for Pennsylvania. Aaron Young with 28. Yusuf Terry with 15 in the score on that play. That's and, right. Uh, yep. Garwell with nine yards. And uh, for Maryland, rushing, uh, Owens, 55 yards, a big run he had there. And uh, Slee has 14 yards. Ryan Lee, he's got six yards. And uh, Jalen Johnson with five yards on, on one carrier. I'm sorry, two carries. So um, the way it looks right now, Pennsylvania's. Uh, they're winning the passing game, and they're winning the big play game. Yeah, I mean, we talked earlier in the, in the broadcast, too, about the weapons that these guys have around them, that Kane and Cade have around them. I mean, just, just I mean, look at the speed. Uh, Youssef, Taiki could actually go out and play wide out if he really needed to. He doesn't in this one. Uh, Will Gibson, I mean, Azir Burnett probably still kicking himself that he couldn't haul in the bomb uh, early from Cade. Uh, that would have certainly been a touchdown had he had he brought it in. Uh, we haven't even called uh, Tanias Becker yet, um, uh, who's lined up. Johnny Freeman's another guy that you got to worry about. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot of weapons that these guys can go to, and I eventually somebody other than Terry's going to strike. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, um, they're honoring a few people on the field. The teams are coming back out. So let's take a minute, and we'll run a few – words from our sponsors and we'll come back with the second half kickoff from the big Hi, i'm pennsylvania governor tom wolf once again pennsylvania is proud to host the big 33 football classic the super bowl of high school football the big 33 has a tremendous history and we welcome all of the players the families and parents from across pennsylvania and maryland this memorial day and the big 33 is more than the big game it's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. For strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. Next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, EyeSight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with The Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, 
can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports could not be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. Pack. Second half, the big 33 game, 62nd edition of the game. And uh, what do we think we're going to see in the second half? I think we're going to see Maryland make an adjustment and uh, try to get some passes completed down the center of the field. I think the I think they're going to try. I absolutely think they're going to try. I think we're going to see more more of the same of what we saw in the first half. I'm really impressed with the coverage from the. I mean, we talked about before the game started. Yeah. Uh, the DBs that we lost before the game and. Yet these guys that they have in there are doing the job, and they're they, doing the job well. They are doing the job, but I will say this: Schlees had very little time, and Lee have all, all had very little time uh, to kind of set their foot. Schlee had two where he could kind of take his five-step plant and throw, but they've all been a little bit hurried, just a just a little bit. And I all think right. you'll see that continue. So there's a kick at the 21-yard line. It's fielded. It's Tally, and that's Miles Tally, and he. Gets up to about the 33, 32 yard line. So we'll see what Pennsylvania did at halftime. And are they gonna come out and try to put it away right away? Now putting it away is kind of a tough word to do in this one because um, we have some rules that kind of allow that to not happen. So in a quarterback, it looks like number 11, Cade Prabula. He's got Aaron Young out there. Two to his left, two to his right. <clears throat> the man goes in motion. Prabula drops back. He's got all kind of trouble, and he just got rid of it. And I'll tell you what, if, if Darius Woods was coming after me, I'd have got rid of that ball too. <laughs> I like the play call because they tried to wiggle Aaron Young out, get him set up for the screen. And he just could not get out of the middle. He got <laughs> stuck in there amongst all those trees. Yeah. There's a tree, there's a 65 tree. You know, those guys in the middle are monsters. They are monstrous guys. So in the he line. just he just got caught up in the forest. He couldn't I mean, get he couldn't wiggle out. 
they're, 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 they're big boys up front on defense. So second down and 10 for Bola back. He's got Young to his left. He drops back the pass. He's in trouble, and he gets the ball away. It's a pass over the middle. He gets about a two-yard gain. There's Tineas Becker. And there's Becker with the catch on that play. We haven't heard much from Becker the entire game, but uh, Bishop McDevitt Starr uh, knows how to catch the ball. He definitely does, too, and that's when he's lethal to a cross. Now, Maryland's got good speed, so they can leg with him. But during the regular season, he would do that multiple times a game, and it's, it was good for 15, 20, you know, depending on how many tackles he broke. But him right. coming across the middle is a good is usually a good solid gain. Pabula lines up. He's got Young to his left. He's got three receivers left, one to the right. Takes a snap and he drops back again. He's got time this time and he launches one downfield. And it's intercepted by number 21 at the 32-yard line. Boy, I'll tell you what, I think we had some receivers from Pennsylvania running a wrong route because we had four receivers right in the same area. Well, it was that was 21. A.J. Woods from Northwest, he had a heck of a first half, too. Three passes defense, that one will count, too, or interception. You know, I didn't I, – it was third and seven, I understand, but you had four – basically just had four vertical routes, all basically – Within the hashes. And they were the all marks, so. they, they, they were all within the vicinity of the ball. So yeah. I think somebody ran a wrong route on that play. And uh, when you when you when that happens, you draw defenders to the yep. ball and you get turnovers. Woods so made, Maryland Woods made a great play on it though. Maryland comes out on the 30, 32 yard line. Or I'm sorry, the twenty eight yard line. And the quarterback drops back. He launches nice. a pass and oh it's caught and he is hit and that's gonna be a penalty. <laughs> Tyke Smith. Tyke Smith led with his head. And that's going to be a penalty on Tyke Smith. But credit the receiver for holding that ball because Smith just blasted him. And that's a second tough hit from Smith. So that's a personal foul. The ball's at the 31 yard line. And that'll take the ball out to about to the 49 yard line first down on the 49 yard line of Pennsylvania this could be something that they needed for Maryland mm -hmm. they need a spark they needed something so there's a carry up the middle for three yards and that's Jabril Johnson again, and uh, I, you know, watching Jabril Johnson run, it just I, he feels like a player that you, you kind of get on the edge of your seat when the ball hits his hands. He's pretty similar to what Patrick Garwo is like. I mean, they're they're both kind of built the same. Uh, you know, they're small enough to kind of duck under those guys, those big guys, but yet they kind of thrive on the contact. You know, they yeah. bounce so well, and they're giving us tough assignments too. I mean, it's not easy to run right up the middle against these guys. All right, so second down and seven at the 36-yard line, or 46-yard line. It's another handoff to Johnson. He gets a few yards up the middle to the 40s. Let's say the 43-yard line, it looks like. So it looks like Maryland's trying to establish a little power game here. And like we said in the first half, try to wear Pennsylvania down on the line. So third and four yards for Maryland. Lee brings the pass, the play out. We'll see what they come out with here. It looks like uh, he's got two to his left, two to his right. Johnson to his right in the backfield with him. The man goes in motion. He fakes the handoff, slings oh, one boy. over the middle, and that's caught. That's Brevin Easton. Now, Brevin Easton is a good receiver, and he just ran a great route over the middle. Um, Easton was now at that time. Easton was not on the same side as you said, Terry. So they put him on the opposite side. Good three-step quick drop by uh, by Schley, and he delivered a strike. So we get a right first to down. Easton. And they got very nice. First down at the 30-yard line. This is something that uh, Maryland needed all game. They've got a little momentum going on. They've got a drive. They're moving the ball. Uh, 14 goes in motion and takes the ball to the left side, and he's brought down at about the 27-yard line. So that's uh, Devin Dawkins with the carry there, wide receiver, and uh, gets a couple yards.
This is a nice drive for Maryland right now. It's their best drive so far. Yep. And they're, yeah. they're in rhythm. <laughs> Plays coming in plenty of time. You know, every 25, 30 seconds, put the play on the. Penalty helped them out, and uh, you know. Yeah. Sometimes that's all you legit, need. It was it, a legit penalty. It was definitely mean, a legit penalty. Yeah. But that's, sometimes that's what you need as a team, you know. And uh, so here we are. It's second and six at the 26. He fakes the handoff and drops back. He's got a guy going uh, deep, and that's trouble right there. And nearly intercepted. Heck. That was a dangerous throw on that play. Uh, he underthrew it. Tyke Smith was right there. Yeah, that's, the coverage. that time I would have I would have liked to see Schley. He had an opportunity to set his feet real quick before he delivered that. Chose to throw it all off, kind of off balance. Um, still a good delivery, um, but I, I thought he kind of could have set up or even tucked it in there. All right, so third and six on the 26 yard line of Pennsylvania. Schley brings him out. He's got two to his right, two to his left. Johnson to his left, and he gives it to Johnson. Mm, nice he makes jab. a move, gets to about the 25. It was a nice move. It was a good jab step. He came right through it. Yep, picked his line, took the point of attack. There just wasn't one. There just wasn't much there. Well, it wasn't much there. So now we got a fourth down, fourth and five, and, and you think Maryland has to go for it here? They can't kick a field goal here. Yeah, they need to move this ball. And like you mentioned, too, I mean, field goal, too, you're talking 40-plus yards. Certainly not a gimme. You're still, you're still two possessions down. You know, it's 640 and running in the third quarter. Plus, there's rules in place if you do, you know, like you mentioned earlier, that you would get the ball if you're still down a touch. I think it's eight points. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, you have to go here. All right, so Shalee drops oh. back to pass. He sees a big hole. And he tries to go through it. The hole it. closes, and he's close. Then I got he it. makes the reach. Uh, the far, the far ref. No, but the the umpire is saying no. That's pretty close. It's very close. Yeah, I think you have to measure that. It looks like. Boy, I'll tell you what. You have to measure that. That was close. Yeah. There you go. So Pennsylvania makes the stop and wow. takes over on the 25-yard line. What a great effort by Schley, though. Great effort. Yep. Made the reach. Uh, I think the umpire saw his knee hit the ground before the ball got out to where it needed to be is probably why. He happened. had a chance to hit the up back. Uh, right out of the, came right out of the seam, just cut out. But he was, he was already committed to the run by then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed by the play, Ashley. I mean, he's a, he, you can see he's a good quarterback. And, uh, you know, he's a good scrambler. So, Kent State's, the, the, the Rockets out there are getting a great player. Yes, for sure. All right, so we're going to take a break right here and a timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. But I'm, what I'm saying is, when the problem was happening, were people able, able to at least get to the website? If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services. 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Pennsylvania has a ball first and 10 on a 20 yard line. Um, Kane Everson back, drops back, fakes a pitch out. He's in trouble. He rolls. Uh, he throws the ball, not an advisable pass. And somehow, somehow, Nazir Burnett. <laughs> what a catch by Nazir Burnett. How did he get that ball, Eric Eppel? Well, Kane made it. Almost made a tack made a tactical mistake, but <laughs> but he figured what the heck, it's an all-star game, let's throw it up. Yeah, that time Woods and them just you know, that stuff it's such a tough play because really the guy only looking back, the first guy looking back is the receiver. Can see that it's underthrown, can adjust his route, just stop on it, 
and then it was, then it's up to the defensive backs to adjust. It's a hard adjustment day. That way, AJ Woods was part of that, and just got sucked under, and boom. A guy like Burnett's gonna make that catch. What a catch, though. I mean, I, I understand the advantage the receiver had, but he had two guys in front of him yeah. that he had to come back through and get <laughs> right. that ball. Uh, we have an injury on the field, and it's um, Davion Johnson had a little injury, but he's walking off the field, so he's okay. We're glad to see that. We do not want to see anyone get injured in this game. That would not be a good thing. That would not, you know. No, um, certainly not. You don't want to see that, and they take precautions, you know, when you're not allowed to run certain plays. So here we go. After that long pass to the 35-yard line, Pens Pennsylvania has a first down and 10-yard line. And apparently they're encroaching on the uh, sideline a little too closely, so the referee make, moves him back. I was worried that we may see, you know, with the sun out and the temperature up, we may see a lot of cramping today. Well, guys, we haven't seen one. Not one. Seen no, anyone. Today. You're right. Well, uh, I will say this. As the ball gets handed off and goes nowhere, and that's Patrick Garwell with the ball, and there's a – somebody falls down. At the, I think he just fell down and thought somebody pushed him. When I talked to the coaches this week uh, on both sides of the field, um, one of the things they mentioned was their kids came to practice in football shape. They were, yeah. They were in football shape. And uh, I know Mark Lyons said he's, he couldn't believe it at the first day of practice for Pennsylvania. He said, those kids look like they, they just pr they've been practicing since they stopped playing football. Well, we talked about a couple guys uh, before we went on the air that we had not seen since December. And we saw them in practice this week, and we were like, what did that guy eat? Like, it was 15 pounds of muscle. Here goes Kane Everson, and look who he's going for, and there, oh! <laughs> Yusef Terry had the ball in his hands. He had the defender beat, bobbled it around from hand to hand, and couldn't pull the ball in. But, That's boy, smart. what a play. But you're right. I mean, they, these, these guys are in shape. And I think that has something to do with the fact that, you know, a lot of these guys, as soon as this game's over, they're going to college. Yep. So yeah. they have to They've stay in shape. They've been on shape. for four months. They've been on maybe a college weight program that the coach has already sent them. They can get a kickstart of them. A lot of these guys are, you know, doing speed camps and things like that. Um, that play right there is on Terry. you got to come back to the auto and just go. You just, you just look at Kane and you say, my bad. Yeah. You just say, my That's bad. It. And move All right, move so on. Kane brings him out. He's got two to his left, one to his right. <laughs> Drops back to pass. He's in trouble. He's scrambling, and he just heaves the ball down again. And again, the receiver goes up, comes down, and makes the grab. And this time it's William Gibson for the Aliquippa. I'll tell you what. His receivers are making him look good right now on this drive. Yeah. Because, well, what do we say? You want to try to, you know. Why not? I mean, you're up 14. There's really not a – it was third and long, you know, if it gets intercepted. Talking to the receivers, talking to the players before the game, they said we got them beat as far as height goes. Um, they said we, we, we're taller than they are. We can go up and we can make the balls. They're, they said the Maryland D DBs just weren't tall enough. And that's what it looks like right now. We've seen three plays now where they were out jumped. So we got a f quick snap. Kane Emerson is running and running, and he's going to get dropped for a loss. Sack back to the <laughs> we'll give that a we'll give it a sack. <laughs> back sure to what the seven was. yard line. I don't know what the play was. It loss of five on that play. <laughs> but you know, even when he's in trouble, Kane Everson looks exactly like you expect him to look. Mm -hmm. So he's got Garwal behind him right now. Takes a snap. He hands the ball to Garwal, who is met immediately. And he breaks free. He gets the edge. And Patrick Garwal gets to the two-yard line. What a play by Garwal to get outside and get away from the defender. We thought he was crushed at the line. And he just said, nope, I'm going the other way. And yeah. Down the left side he went. What did I, what did I tell you about Garo? <laughs> loves the contact. All that loves the bounce. All that running right there. 
Yeah, it looked like they could have got tacked on, maybe even a face mask or a, or a horse collar there. I but. thought it was a horse collar myself. But, uh, he got two yards out of it, all that running. He must have stepped out of bounds, Eric. We thought he got to the two-yard line. So with the ball at the five, <laughs> great effort by Garwell to not get taken yeah, down. Yeah. I mean, he was caught dead to rights by a very large man and uh, got away. <laughs> so uh, Kane Everson takes the snap, and he's looking to the inside, and there's a touchdown pass. And that's Will Gibson again with the big catch. And that's a five-yard touchdown pass to Will Gibson not, with a little bit of showboating. You go, if he's going to give it to his buddy, we'll, we'll, I think he's going we'll somewhere. Right with that. He's got a touchdown. He's got something in mind. And he absolutely did give that ball. What a great gesture. What a great gesture by Will Gibson. Gave that ball to his buddy after a touchdown pass. And this reporter got a little tear in his eye for that. Well, I think Gibson, too, we, we talked uh, when the skirmish happened. Gibson was involved in that. And I think he genuinely, his coaches took him aside, said, that can't, you can't do what you did. It just, that's just, you know, and it, he's, he's lucky to have the opportunity. Let's just put it that way. He's lucky to have the opportunity to play yes, in the second he half. Is, he is. He's very lucky. So uh, I'm glad he's taking advantage of that and doing the right thing down the stretch. That was an incredible gesture. The kick is up and good. Yeah, it's Colton McGee with the kick. So the score with 2.56 left in the third quarter is Pennsylvania 21, Maryland 0. We'll be back right after these messages from our sponsor. That's a great gesture. Is it overheating in the sun? That's exactly what's happening. You want to cover it? Are we back? Yeah, we're back. That's it. Listen, I don't know what happened to my partner here, but. Are we back? Some kind of accident. So that's 21 0 Pennsylvania, 256 right. left in the third quarter. Here and Eric, at it's Field. just a flesh wound. Apparently, I don't know, brother. I don't know what's going I don't know what on here. There. That's what happens when you get I don't old. Know if it was that scene from starts. Alien? Something gonna start coming out. I'm gonna you know blame I mean? it on my statistician Ed Weaver from Circle W Sports. I think when I wasn't looking, he hit me with a pen. <laughs> like, Sorry about that exciting moment there, folks. But uh, who said broadcasting isn't dangerous? Yeah. Who said being a reporter is easy? I'm telling you. So anyway, here we are. We're on the. We're 21 to nothing. Pennsylvania leads on some. Amazing catches by our receivers in Pennsylvania. And the ball falls off the tee. But the, I'll tell you what, the receivers have uh, they've, they've done a great job for Pennsylvania. And uh, they've made their quarterbacks look very, very good. They really have, yeah. And uh, so we'll try this kick again. There's, there's Brandon Clark on there with the crutches. There's a oh, kick. Okay. It's a deep kick. It goes into the end zone and out. And there's the touchback. And that's Anthony De Silva with the touchback. So we're going to come out to the 25. First and 10. Maryland needs something right here. Of course, if Maryland does happen to score on this drive, they will get the ball back because of the Pennsylvania or the uh, Big 33 rules. 
so they'll get the ball back. But Maryland needs something right now. But uh, Eric, mm. I said it when they picked this team. This is one of the best Big 33 teams I've seen in a long time. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'll pay for, it's I'll, looking at. I mean, really, you know, you, if you look where some of the guys are going to school, yeah. It's absolutely, on paper, it's definitely one of the best we've seen in the past 10 years, I would say. All right, so we got a reverse, and he's going to throw the ball to the quarterback, and Slay gets the ball. Uh, it's and that was yeah, just a late. dumb play. Here we go again. Yeah, that's late. Brandon George, that was that was not a smart play by George. No, not smart at um, all. Threw the quarterback out of bounds, and uh, you, you can't do that. You just can't. So the double reverse pass back to Slay works. Gets him a first down. A uh, little trickeration there. They're going to tack on 15 yards. So that's going to put Maryland in business again. Although we've seen this before from Maryland and they weren't able to capitalize on it. So the ball went out of bounds at the 47 yard line or the 48. The 47 yard line is where the ball went out of bounds. Nice, nice little So give it a 12 yard or a 22 yard pass play. They're on the 47. They're going to tack on 15 yards. So the 22 yard catch, 15 yards, it's a gain of 37 yards. They're now on the Pennsylvania 38 yard line. And I'll say it again, Eric. Um, we were kind of worried about the weather yesterday, but it's actually not a bad day right now. No, it's just that, you know, the, the weird thing about the uh, quote-unquote mid-state, which is not central PA here, in our neck of the woods, it gets hotter as the day goes on. You know, noon to two is supposed to be your hottest moment during the day. Not true here, Billy. It's like four to eight. That's when it's the hottest, so. All right, there's a handoff. Johnson. He gets a couple of yards to the outside. We're going to have a penalty on the play on, on the offense. That's going to be on the offense. So, yeah, where I'm from in, in uh, State College, I live in Center Hall. We've got the Nittany Mountain. And if you ever watch weather, the radar, when a storm comes out of the west, it literally splits in two and goes around the State College Center Hall area. That's good. And then gathers back together and explodes on the other side of the That's a good thing, uh, right? Waves for yeah. Well, it's a good thing for us. It is a good thing for us, but uh, weather is uh, an interesting thing. My grandfather used to say, I don't know whether it's going to rain or not. <laughs> <laughs> I see what I he did there. I see yeah. what he did there. All right. That's all right. Grandpa can get away with that. Yeah, grandpas can do anything they want. That's right. Because uh, grandpas are good to you. So here we go. After the penalty, it's first and 20 on to 48 for Maryland. And uh, I'll tell you what, they, they, they really have got to find a rhythm here. So he's in trouble. And this is just, and that's a dangerous pass. Uh, throw it out of bounds. Brandon George, I'll tell you, Brandon George, you know, he's had a few moments in his game, but he is having a game, and he's having the game that you expected him to have. Eric. Yeah, he was a leading tacker at halftime with six stops. He's uh, he's just pretty much always all around the football. He's fast enough to play out in coverage. You know, if you, you give that guy seven yards off the line of scrimmage and give him a head of steam, if he picks the right hole, you, know, you might as well just dig your hole Yeah, and after Pitt's, that. Pitt's had some down years, but those are the kind of guys Pitt needs to uh, get back up in the, in the top of the rankings and uh, nice for, be a good yep. team. He's a nice-looking player. And we've got a timeout here. So with this timeout for Maryland, we'll take a timeout too. We'll be back in 30 seconds after a word from our sponsors. I'm glad they were able to get on and get the video of this. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 
717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. So move all three, one at a time. Do you want me to uh, leave them on GoDaddy until he, and, and, and deal with GoDaddy after we move them, or should we tell GoDaddy we're moving them? Well, we'll have to wait till the service. So, second and 20, Maryland has the ball. Quarterback drops back to pass, throws the ball, and it's just overthrown, and now, it's starting to look like Maryland is just coming to port. Yeah, you almost feel now that they need some sort of huge play, some sort of even even if it's a fumble on the punt, on the ensuing punt. Not that they can't get it here on third and what is it, third and twenty? Yeah, but you know. Yeah, you want to you, and I really want to see Maryland do good. I want to see this game well. You know. Um, Again, I, I've, I've gotten to see a couple of the Maryland players play, and, and they're good players. It's just that they haven't been able to put something together against this tremendous defensive backfield Pennsylvania has. And uh, the line for Pennsylvania has been uh, angry too. And once again, he was under a little bit of pressure and let the ball loose. Incomplete. Um, that was Dwayne Majors from Conwell League in, in on the play. Dwayne's a good player, too. And, you know, we talk about the way that uh, the running back is built. Dwayne is built like a brick also. He is a very, very solid player. I love the fact that Dwayne Majors was just hanging out with the lineman there after that play. The Maryland lineman. And he's going to St. Francis, and I'll tell you, St. Francis University pulled in a great class this year, and, and, and he's one of them. So we're going to punt. Maryland's going to punt. They're going to wait until the third quarter or the fourth quarter while the third quarter comes to an end. 21 nothing. Pennsylvania leads. So let's take another break. We'll come back after a 60-second break from a word from our sponsors. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, eyesight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Pennsylvania chocolate milk, official refuel drink of the Big 33 Football Classic. Beverage of champions. Are we ready? Do we want to talk football? Eric, should we talk about football? I think we still have a quarter left, so yes. All right, let's talk about football. Let's let's talk about this Pennsylvania team and their defense. And uh, I'll tell you what. There are some guys out there that are playing football in, on the line for Pennsylvania that have just literally shut down Maryland. One of the guys, too, I was kind of looking at, too, was Gage Hill, uh, the big guy from Altoona. Uh, I believe that he'll play offensive line at Toledo. Yes, he is, he's there for offense. Um, but correct. he's on the defensive line here. He missed a bunch of the season, so we really didn't get a good – in other words, he didn't get a real good run for everybody to kind of know him and this and that. Right. Yeah, they see, okay, he's a big kid. He's going to Toledo. But I was looking forward to seeing how he did today as kind of a – I think I think he's one of the guys that would really sort of challenge himself in this game. You know, like a Brandon George would, you know, because he plays at 110 all the time. Uh, you know, a kid like Tally who's undersized and wants to prove himself at every turn. I thought Gage Hill was one of those guys too – 
to look out for in this one. And he's been hunkered down in the middle too, of course, with uh, Carter Christopher uh, in those DT roles, and he's done a really good job today. One of the things I've been watching for Pennsylvania on the offensive line is Elias Marto and Ricky Santiago. They've been doing a good job of holding their man long enough to to allow the quarterbacks to create some situations. Yeah, I thought Mar and, uh, I thought Martezzi had a, had, a, had a bad series there right before the half, but he's come back here and he's played yeah, pretty well. Yeah, and, he has done yeah. good. So Maryland's going to punt. So he's standing at his 38-yard line for the punt. Back deep, or somebody is somebody who really wants to get that ball. Oh, and it's a oh. short line drive kick, and he's going to let That's it go over and in the end zone. So it was pretty obvious they knew where not to kick that ball. Well, is it going to go over his head or not to hit? That's for sure. I know uh, MJ Devonsire just wants that ball to come to him very badly. And uh, our, I don't think he's going to get a chance. Our buddy Dwayne Majors nearly nicked that ball, too. So Pennsylvania will get the ball on the 25 yard line. Or the 20 yard line, I'm sorry. We're capable of that quarterback. Got Johnny Freeman from St. Joe's. He's been quiet. He's a good receiver. Yeah, we late, haven't heard from him. Late addition to the team. Um, but uh, we all know him from the 6A championship game. Had a tremendous effort in that one. Oh, yeah, he, he was the kind game. of the forgotten Boy. guy, you know. Yes. It was like nobody really talked about Johnny Freeman until everybody saw him at Irish Park State. I'm like, oh, who's this kid? <laughs> Keep yeah. an eye on him. And Free, you know, Freeman's going again in university. And, yep. uh, you know, not everybody is a D1 player, but... You know, it doesn't take a D1 player to be a great player on a big 33 team. I mean, yeah, and you talk about, you know, this, all the guys that he's played with. I mean, he, this is a two-time state champion with St. Joe's Prep. Um, you know, a starting wide receiver on that team. Uh, you got to be good to earn a starting spot on that on that squad. So, yeah, he's definitely a bad. He's a huge pickup for Gannon. He's a kid that can go in there. Like, you know, we talk about it, like a Brandon Clark making an impact at Slippery Rock and these guys that maybe were – Supposedly going to be D1, and maybe maybe Freeman was kind of a late bloomer, but, I mean, that's a tremendous pickup for Gannon. I'm not sure what's going on on the field. I think you may have a little bit more TV time. But uh, I think we had a little TV timeout going on there. Uh, there's another. Maybe network. they're just going to bring out the milkshake truck. Yes. And just give every player a milkshake break. Or with a hose, a fire hose. Yeah. And I just think, spray the crowd they, with a milkshake. I think they prefer break. the milkshake. Yes. Spray the crowd with a milkshake. That's what it would be. You would be cool and sticky. <laughs> there you go, yeah. Yeah. So, well, as we wait here, as, as we wait, I think we're under a, there's, a, there's another station. We might be under a TV timeout right now. And, uh, there's a, maybe a penalty? Balls at the 32. So there was a penalty on. So Maryland keeps the ball. Pennsylvania and Maryland gets the ball back. I wonder, did they call roughing on? Uh, I'm not sure. What roughing on majors? I don't think majors got. It. I don't know. I didn't see anybody know. So as we try to sort through the confusion. Maryland has a first down at the 33-yard line. Okay. So let's take 30 seconds, and we'll come back when they get this all straightened out. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services. 
717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. Okay, we got the. We had a penalty now. It's fourth and five for Maryland. Schley drops back. He's under pressure. He oh, hits nice. a man underneath, and he drops the ball. And there's a scramble for the ball after the catch. Pennsylvania is going to recover that ball. Dan Burma. Did you see the receiver? Number one. Brevin Easton dropped that ball coming across the inside. And he caught the ball at about the 30 yard line, or the 32 yard line. That's about right, 33. And then Bam Brema recovered Bam the fumble. Bam Brema came up with a fumble. Bam Brema from Laurel Sock with the, with the fumble recovery. Pennsylvania has the ball on a 40 yard line. 11 19 left. And there's the snap. Kabula drops back. There's Rucci on the outside. It's going to take more than one to bring him down, and it does. It takes two. He gets about a three-yard pass play on it. But uh, good to see. You know, I've been waiting to see Rucci catch the ball, and, you know, um, hats off to Bennett out there on, on, the, on the tackle. You know, he was able to at least stop Rucci. Yeah, anytime he could stop Hayden Rucci's momentum, that's a good job. Yeah. Now, when you're a tight end in a game like this, you're you're at a disadvantage because they're really they don't have time to build plays for a tight end in, in a game like this because it's just it's it's a wide open game and a tight end you know if you're going to use them properly it's it's very technical. So we have two uh, wideouts on each side, and uh, Prabola drops back. He's got time. He hits. And there he is, Aaron, on the sidelines. Aaron Young, and he gets out of bounds at around the 49 yard line of Maryland. So that's going to be a first down for Pennsylvania. And there's that play that we were hoping to see, but we've got a flag down. This could be a hold. It's going to be a personal foul, hands to the face on the defense. So that'll be tacked on to the end of it. And uh, too many mistakes by Maryland. So the referee marks the ball off to the 30, 39 yard line. Well, Pennsylvania will have a first down. And a big play here pretty much puts the game out of reach, Eric. Wow, yeah, that's not, I mean, now you're looking at first down. You could probably just run three times and leak another three and a half minutes off the, off the board. So, I mean, 10 09 left. Aaron Young takes the ball. Finds a little hole, dances around, and gets up to the 35, maybe the 36 yard line. That's some serious tap dancing right there. He was looking for yeah. a place to go. Right now, I think, you know, offensively, Pennsylvania has it rolling. Offensively for Maryland, they just. I don't, and it, nobody really stood out for them and, or took control of the game. No. And right now, Pennsylvania, I think, has Maryland 
the defense worn and on their heels right now? I think at this point, yeah, like I said, you can you could just train this with three straight runs, uh, and then you're pressing on the other side. So Darwell comes in for Aaron Young. The motion. Oh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> he gets away, and he's still running. And are you kidding me? Gets a first down and goes out That's of bounds. Be yeah. <laughs> Yusef Terry has just been incredible in this game for Imhotep. I'm not sure if Terry saw something on the right side that just told him to say stop and turn around. But it was almost like he made up his mind up before he had the ball. It looked like it was going to be a pass play to me. Uh, Terry, was, It looked like Terry was going to turn around and throw the ball, but the Garwell was covered. I'll be honest. That's what, that's what I, I thought. I would be surprised if Coach Lyons would call a trick play here with a pass. I Just the be. fact that you're up 21 nothing, the game's pretty much over. I think that would be, uh, I'll, I'll say, frowned upon. Yeah. But um, All right, Pabula drops back lots of time, launches the ball. Or just throw it deep. And, oh! <laughs> and yeah. Nazir Burnett. That's Nazir two. Burnett gave Maryland a gift right there. That's the second time he's had a ball go right through his hands. Again, that's a my and bad, Cade. You cannot that's, do uh, that. Um, well, I'm sure when Nazir gets down to Georgia Tech, uh, they're going to look at him and say, young man, we've got a drill for you. And uh, they're going to work on having him catch that ball. So we're going to mark off a penalty here against Pennsylvania. Yeah, so we got to get him. I'm not sure what the penalty was. All right. So back to the 48 yard line. It's going to be first and 350 yards. So Young goes in motion and takes the ball, finds a hole to the inside, and gets about three yards. So give him three yards up to the 45 yard line. And it's it's fun to watch the perimeters because Hayden Rucci just drove his man about 25 yards upfield. Well, you know what was helping him was Garwo. Yeah. <laughs> Garwo's like, I want to get in on this. <laughs> so. So after a three-yard run by Aaron Young, Pennsylvania has now has a second down and 29 yards on the 45 of Maryland. And I think we'll see another run right here, but I think yeah, I think wrong. you go and right back. A, you're right back to Nazir there's somehow. There's Pabula, and Pabula is oh, just he's not in there. swallowed up by one of those mammoth linemen up front for Maryland. And that's number 65, Darius Woods, with the tackle. And when I say what mountain, when you're 6'6", 285, you, you qualify for that. Yes, you do. You can go on any ride you want. So we got third and 33 after the loss back to the 49-yard line. You, know, you, you almost get the feeling like Pennsylvania doesn't mind this. Uh, they just want to well, run No, time. I mean, the penalty, yeah, yeah Drew, uh, you know, it dropped Pennsylvania a serious hole, but it, it actually hurts Maryland. From Pull another back set of downs, pass. they're all the way there. Incomplete pass. We're going to punt the ball here. But uh, I'll tell you, on, on the coverage on that one, Lirian Mertesi, we talked about him earlier, but he just stood his man right up and pushed him backwards and uh, totally disrupted the defensive play on that, on that, uh, and he did it good. So he has recovered nicely. And of course, uh, we have to give respect to Mertesi because uh, on Memorial Day, he's heading to Naval Academy. That's right. So you know, you get a little extra respect. And I'll tell you, Eric, when I see a kid get an offer or commit to one of the uh, service combat academies, it does give me a little chill in my bones to let people know that. You know, because you feel proud to let people know that somebody's going to serve their country, and they expect it. Well, I, I you know, you almost, it's you almost you celebrate it for not just 
you know, not just because of the, they're going to play football for them. Like you just celebrate, you know, you celebrate all the all the things that that kid or that recruit is going to learn and, and be a part of. That's what it, that's what's the most impressive yes. to me. I mean, yeah, of course, you know, playing at one of the Naval Academies is no, you know, slouch. But if there's any recruits out there listening right now or watching this, um, if I could give you one piece of advice, don't overlook a service academy and don't let it scare you because of uh, the commitment you think it takes. Because what we tell recruits is that it's very simple. You get recruited by, say, the Army or the Navy. You play football for them four years. And it's just like being recruited by Syracuse. You play four football years for them. And when you're done, you have a job. And that's basically what it is with the service academies, too. When you serve them and play football for four years, you you have a job to do. And that's it. So don't let the fact that it is an academy scare you from being recruited for them. Pretty good advice. That is very good advice. I mean, you, you know, not to mention, you play a great schedule. You know what I mean? If you've got an Air Force or an Army, Navy, you're, you're playing all. You're playing anybody. And if I remember correctly, if, I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, the Army Academy led the nation in yards per play last year. If I'm not mistaken, but I could be, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct. I'd have to so, I'd have to check on that, but they were up there. Yes. Yeah. And you know they run the ball a lot. So here we go. Maryland has the ball on a 30 yard line. And he backs the pass, he launches one, and it falls short. But taking a hit was Ryan Lee on that play, and he took a big hit on that play. Complied by Marcus Mason, too, in coverage. Mason just clubbed. Kept him on his outside yep. and wouldn't let Mason him in and make job. the adjustment. So, second down. All right, so Maryland comes back out. 5-12 left in the game. Maryland lines up. Schley brings him out. He's got two to his left. He's got flanking backs and one receiver to his right. The backs peel out, and he throws it over the middle incomplete. And, uh, just, I mean... It's not very strong play here from the Maryland team this year. Uh, all around. Well, it's they, tough. They've struggled the entire yeah. game. And, and that's the thing, we too, when you're trying to come back from the 21 death. I mean, they know it's coming. And you, you've got so much speed and athleticism on the outside here. Uh, it's almost it's almost impossible to trick them. You're playing, you're playing heads up against some of the best D-backs in the country. And you're looking at a so, game that could easily have been 42 to nothing. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, it's just – you're. The, the mountain is, is uh, very, very steep. So back to passes. And incomplete. And boy, I'll tell you what. Mason again. Great coverage right there. And that was Mason again. Um, one of the memories, you know, Marquez Mason, not just a great cover back, but he's a dangerous person on, on returns as a return person for uh, St. Joe's. Yep. He had some really good returns for St. Joe's last year. And... Uh, he, he, had, he had an impressive performance on a very cold night against Pine Richland. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and uh, he did a great job that night. Was it and, raining? Uh, it, was, it was very cold and snowy at Hershey. That was two years ago. Two years ago, yes. yes. Two years ago, yeah. And Mason was impressive in that game. So here's a punt. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a high punt. And it's fielded at the 25-yard line. Tyke Smith. Tyke Smith, and we're going to have a penalty on that play. And it's, I just love how these guys keep. I mean, it's it, yes, it's an All Star game. You want to win, and but I mean, they they keep fighting when three guys are around them. I mean, you have to admire that. And Tyke's not the first guy to do that. Yeah. When it's just said, when, when everything in your body says just go down, yeah. you do not go down. And when no. you're And 
the penalty the penalty is going to be on PA. It's a 15 yard penalty, and uh, just as we give him involved, Marcus is making. So yeah, and he's he was you know dipped into duty here, you know because of the D back situation, yeah. PA, and he's done a great job. Yeah. So let's take a break right here. We'll be back in 60 seconds after this timeout. One, I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with the Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting program. So Pennsylvania with the ball, they're on their 12 yard line. We are under four minutes with three minutes and 40 seconds. There's a handoff to Young and he throws the ball and he's got a receiver. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just a Johnny, little fun play. Johnny Freeman. But Freeman almost had his play and Aaron Young led him a little too much, but uh, there's a trick play there, uh, sent in by Lions. It was a trick play. I'm not so. Uh, I mean, Mark I'm not Lyons a huge is fan a, of that. I think you can still do that straight up. I, I don't know. He's a good coach. I guess but, he's uh, just I like fun. him. I, I think they're know. having fun out there. I don't know if it's that if it's viewed as fun on the other side of the yeah. uh, Maryland side, but yeah, uh, I'm not saying there's anything malicious about it, but I'm just saying it would not be my choice it's to interesting. run a trick play. It's interesting how some people when, think something's fun and right. something's not at exactly. certain times. When you're up three touchdowns yeah. and there's only three minutes to go. That's all so, Prabola gives the ball to Young. He goes, or 10, I'm sorry. That's uh, up the middle. Garwall with a carry. A couple yards. And like you said, Eric, he went right for the hit. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he didn't hesitate to hit the line. He just went right nope. in after it. Yep. So. Timeout. We're going to have a timeout by Maryland, so let's get in some more. Uh, let's pay some more bills. We'll take another 30 second break and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Setting up the end of the game, 2:50 to go, and uh, the reason we're laughing is because we're talking about our friends out at Altoona's Mansion Park, and uh, we'll give them a shout out because it seems like Aaron, Eric, and I need to get an apartment out that way. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we're there enough. So <laughs> Prabola back takes the snap, and Aye. we've got movement, and that has to be the slowest possible. Sorry false start I've ever yeah. seen. Elias Marte <laughs> just sort of stood up, stood up and just said, I'm done. I'm out. It's like, it was almost that like was, he had a gas pain and he had it with those was, faces. But, that was funny. Uh, Elias Marte just kind of slowly it's, got It's out. hot now. They've been on the yeah, field for two so and a half Prabola hours. So Prabola drops back to pass. Uh, he's got all, boy, he's got all day. He takes off. <laughs> he hits his man. And that is, again, Gibson from out, out club. Uh, up to the 29-yard line. Give him a first down. Great play by Prabula. Yeah, he strung it out. He probably could have went deep there. He had Freeman uh, in a little bit, but got the play done. Got a big yard. His first down. Aaron Gibson did the job. So we have a first down. Two minutes left in the game. 
first and 10 at the 25, I think we'll see a few runs right here. And uh, sure enough, it goes to Garwo. He gets a hole in the middle and gets a couple of yards. Run. So Garwo pads his stats, five or six yard run. And uh, I think this game is in the books, Eric. Yeah, well, I think Maryland will use their last to what? One more timeout. They got that's the last one. They're going to use it. So they use their last timeout, and we'll use our last timeout, and we'll go to commercial and be back in 30 seconds. All right, soundtrack. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, eyesight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. Okay, guys, we're under two minutes to go, 21 to nothing. It's been a big play game for Pennsylvania all game long. It's been a big jump ball game, right? Big jump ball game. And so the teams come up to the line. I think we'll see a few runs from here on out. Pennsylvania can run the clock out. But Pabola drops back to pass. Over the middle. And just missed on the connection there. Yusuf Terry didn't have a chance on that one. Yeah, that one's a little heavy from Cape Cabrillo, but. I'm surprised at the throw, though. I mean, uh, you've got a chance to run this clock out, and uh, you don't do it, but that's okay. I mean, like, I'm not a football coach, and I'll tell you what. There are very few football coaches out here in this world that I've been able to predict. Well, I, I predict this one probably will be a run, right? I would, uh, third and three, you know, they need a first down. Yeah, this is a little draw, right? So, but they don't need a first down to win. Just Garwell, to, just right to the uh, end the game. No, and, they're going to the, As I said before. Oh, a little wheel of the car. Uh, you got a wheel no, out. that's the car, all right. There's an interference call. And, uh. <laughs> so there's a pass interference play right there. And now Pennsylvania will run the clock out. I expect you to see a couple runs here unless Mark Lyon wants to get somebody. Unless he wants to run a triple reverse. Like this one. So we got a 15 yard penalty on the interference. Looks like we've seen the last of Aaron Young in this game. Uh, I think that's him with his shirt off on the sidelines down there. So Garwall's in. Fabula's in. One minute and 30 seconds left. Fabula gives the ball to Garwall. Garwall goes inside and goes back down after a gain of one. The clock will count off here, Eric. One minute and 15 and counting. And as we count down to the end of the 62nd PSFCA, Big 33, Maryland versus Pennsylvania game, I'm going to have to give the uh, MVP to the receiving core of the Pennsylvania team. All, all whatever. Yeah, well, that was, it wasn't exactly makeshift. These guys are, yeah, all. Yeah. I yeah, mean, I think that's uh, it's a good. Uh, when I talked to Cade Perbola, the day after he was chosen for the game, I said, what would you think of the team? He said, I cannot wait to throw the ball to those guys. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, it turned out that way, uh, you know. Well, that should be the last game. play. We, you know, we had a couple of drops by the Maryland, or, uh, Pennsylvania receivers. but uh, And there it is. 15, 14 were counted down. So Pennsylvania will win the 62nd Big 33 game, 21 to nothing. 
We'll come back with a game wrap after a word from our sponsors. If you're looking for strategies to help grow your portfolio while simultaneously protecting a portion of it from inevitable market fluctuations, it's time to learn more and contact Chris Simon at Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Simon Financial Services, 717-368-3526. Hi, I'm Pennsylvania Governor Tom Wolf. Once again, Pennsylvania is proud to host the Big 33 Football Classic, the Super Bowl of high school football. The Big 33 has a tremendous history, and we welcome all of the players, the families, and parents from across Pennsylvania and Maryland this Memorial Day. And the Big 33 is more than the big game. It's a chance to celebrate the accomplishments of all of the high school all-stars and enjoy a holiday weekend packed with festivities, fun, food, and more. If you're visiting from out of town, I hope you check out the amazing sights here in central Pennsylvania. Congratulations to all the players. We look forward to another spectacular game and, of course, another Pennsylvania win. Your next adventure in a Subaru Outback from Johnson Subaru. For a limited time, drive a new 2019 Subaru Outback with financing as low as 0%. Outback. Standard symmetrical all-wheel drive, eyesight driver assist, and more. Outback. The best-selling all-wheel drive for 10 years running. Outback. An IIHS top safety pick and best resale value rating by Kelly Blue Book. Get your Outback at Johnson Subaru, Route 119 south of Dubois. Online at johnsonsubaru.net. Financing with approved credit for 36 months. See dealer for details. I'm Ed Weaver, owner of Circle W Sports, and I have some huge news. Circle W Sports is partnering with The Funding Zone to help bring our full suite of products to more teams and athletic departments. Schools who want to use Circle W Sports products as a new client, including our web, mobile, and live scoring platforms, can now get them without any initial cost. Once a team or athletic department signs up with Circle W Sports, the Funding Zone will provide your team or athletic department with interest-free financing to get you up and running on the best platform available. The Funding Zone will then help you fundraise to not only cover the use of our products, but also help you raise money for your school. Circle W Sports cannot be more proud to partner with the Funding Zone to provide you with everything you need from scores, stats, and standings, to rosters, records, and team history. Circle W Sports is the easy and complete online platform to promote your school sporting programs and your student athletes. It's a wrap from Landis Field. Just a couple of quick stats. Pennsylvania total offensive effort 53 plays, 322 yards. Yusef Terry, two receptions, 75 yards of the TD. Gibson with the TD and 53 yards. Prabula, six of 17, 73. Kane Everson, five for nine for 142 yards, two touchdowns. The defense held Maryland to 145 yards of offense on the day. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff all around. I mean, Kane had a great had a great uh, last game to his uh, career. Uh, Yusef Terry was dynamic. I mean, a lot of the wide receivers were dynamic. This game could have had probably three to four other big plays, meaning touchdown plays for Pennsylvania. Uh, they were just, Maryland was just a little bit overmatched in yeah. this one. And as we watched the crowd gather on the field to congratulate all the players, I want to thank Eric Epler from Penn Live. I want to thank Hornet TV. What a great crew these guys have. They're all they're high school kids, and they do a phenomenal job. So if you watched our broadcast today, check out Hornet TV. Follow them on YouTube. Um, they do a good job for Juniata Valley. My name is Billy Splain from PA Football News. 
for Ed Weaver at Circle W Sports, and for everyone here, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Big 33 game, and we'll see you all somewhere down the road because PA Football News, we got you covered.